Is this Catless Whispers? Yeah! At least they have a female there. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm for it. I'm for this. It's nice, G. We are sure about it. As I take your hand and lead you to the... Yeah, the person dancing at the center. That is true. I know Kutaku. One day I could look that cool. Harley. A wicked beard. Beards are annoying. Yes, they are! Look like AJ Styles. You know what? I'm gonna keep shaving my beard just to piss off my girl. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, there you go. All right. <laughs> there you go. We're gonna we're gonna be shaving beards until we uh we have nothing left. It's just nubs. Just yeah. nubs. You're gonna get a Brazilian. What's up, everyone? We have Dingo, well, the baby streaming, and <laughs> and we have me, of we course. Got, mm -hmm. We got me, too. I got two streams going, all right? Hey, we're living in the future, homies. Don't tell anyone. Living the dream. Don't tell anyone. Yeah. I got I got my stream in regular form and short Already form, ever. so let's fucking go. Yeah, now, now we can attack on both ends of the stick. Now it's like not like DSP. Evening everyone. Let's 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 get to let's get to dipshit. Who has more gray hairs, me or DSP? What up, hood? What's up? What's up, Roxy? What's up, everyone? I Roxy. I love Roxy. video games. This motherfucker only made it really late. Yeah. For the whole day. You're start, you're, your business is starting to... Well, you're already a failure, but your business is starting to look like it. No it, it, but today, you know what? my love had gone away. It's all good because he's a piece of shit. He is a piece of dog shit. You're Garbo. One Phil here. Now, now. Welcome to the Daily Wrap for what was Friday the 27th. Welcome to the Daily Wrap for... Welcome also to it. Known as Dragon's Dogma 2 launch day, a day when I'm fine. Dragon's Dogma 2 launch day, and I played it very poorly. Dragon's Dogma 2 electric boogaloo. He bored the shit out of me playing doggies. Yeah. Except for he did have a moment where he tossed an NPC off the side of a, of a cliff. You know, I'm pretty sure everyone did that shit. But he thought it was like the most ingenious thing in a, like, you know, like he went back in time for a second. Like, look, I got an NPC toss. <laughs> remember me when I did it, in Red Dead? Remember? 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 Oh remember? God! I was doing that shit in Metal Gear Solid Five. Right. Finally, breaking up this marathon of. Baldur's Gate and uh, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth with something different, a brand new release Phil. that you guys said you wanted to see. Oh, you go. Phil, if you wanted to break that shit up, you would have been done with the games by now. But That's what, he took forever. Exactly. He, he, I said this before, and I'll say it again. And D-Dog, you worked in places. Do you ever get like three hours to work on something? No, you get more time. It, a lot of times you're on projects. Don't it's it's not by the hours, by the salary, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. It, it's not. It, hey, right. It, it's it, we're gonna pay you this much, and you can. I'm not saying you can work as little. They want you to work a certain amount of hours, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's 
I'm not saying that you're not married to it, but you know, it's like to him, it's like he he sees this as like a uh, like a bank. He's a bank. Like I gotta, I'm only open for three hours today, guys. Buy your plushies, get the fuck out. And it's like you're not a plushie store, jackass. And then you're over here saying about at the end, we'll get to that clip. Like, oh, oh, I'm I, everything's so neat and you know and uh quality over quantity you're not even burger king you're like you're the crystals of the fucking world this bitch this bitch this bitch he thinks he's loving it other new releases that came out today this is the one that you picked and so i played it all day long um did we pick it though phil to give you all a recap uh you know to start today was a one fun level one podcast it. which talked a little bit about dragon's dogma 2 and its reception but also about a ton of gaming news. I mean, there was stories about Starfield and its botched ending and how Bethesda now develops games in these giant, bloated places where no one can get anything done. Uh, there was a whole oh, article have a about lot Kotaku to say falling apart at the seams. About Sweet, baby. Game. No, about Starfield. Starfield. Oh, okay. When we when get we to get, that? Yeah, when we get to that. Okay. There was an article about... Larian Studios saying they're no longer going to make D&D content ever, among many other stories. So I hope if you're interested in my day off segment to find out what oh. I did yesterday when I was not nope. here streaming, but also a lot of game news covered. Beach Check mode. out the podcast from this morning. Okay. Now, basically, I played Dragon's no, Dogma 2 all day long, about five and a half hours of gameplay today. Okay. <clears throat> That's Here's it. what I have to say. So far, the story is intriguing mm -hmm. and gets better the further in you get. For no base, but it's getting more intriguing when you get to the capital city later on in the game. Um, the gameplay elements are sound and interesting. Action-based RPG as opposed to so many more slower turn-based games I've been playing recently. This one being fully action-based is actually a breath of fresh air. Plays very similarly to what I remember from Dragon's Dog. You know what's funny? Would you like to know the funny part about this? Huh. Funny away, sir. You know what else is an action RPG? But you know what the problem with that game is? Bikinis. Bikinis. Mm. That's the problem. Bikinis. So for him seeing a breath of fresh air, it's like, Phil, you're already playing an action RPG. Call Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you idiot! Dogma One, like I actually jumped right in and started playing it. And we're like, oh yeah, you jump, you climb, get to the weak point, stab it there a million times. You know, while your party is basically buffing and doing things. So I was like, yeah, that's it's pretty much almost the same. Um, when it comes to that, I don't even, I'm not even sure exactly what they've improved or changed. Um, the pawn system is unique and refreshing. You yourself are a character that will always level up, and you have one pawn that will always be your partner and level up along with you in the game. Mm -hmm. But then you have two pawns that you summon at any time during any one of the uh, town segments or out in the world you can find these summoning spots. And basically, they're just uh, static characters that don't change. And they are fun, and then you can change them up. Whenever you're leveling up, let's say you start at level 8 and all of a sudden you're level 10. Well, you probably don't want a level 7 or 8 person with you. So then you get rid of them. You go to another summon point. You summon some more pawns that are actually real characters other people created. And it's pretty neat in that regard because it always keeps it moving and rotating with your you cast. You have to be online um, for that. And, probably. you know, for the most part, the open world structure is interesting because you can wander around and do as much side content as you want. Like, you could just beeline through story elements or you can explore more and do... Oh, no! And that's really where some of the big oh, no. is you. You know, today I had fought a giant oh, side no. that I found in the open world before I had ever side content story. Later on, hours later, yeah, in the story, you actually side run into content one, is and the game treats content. it like, "Oh, that's the first time," but I've already beaten one. Oh my god! And that's really cool when you're in an area and you're walking around, you're exploring, you discover a rare new enemy or whatever. And then when you kill it, you get tons of experience points as a reward. Usually you level up and you get some good loot from it or whatever. Or you find a nice optional area with some good loot there or some, a lot of money and stuff like that. It's really neat, and I like that about the game. But if you don't want that, you can treat it as a more streamlined experience and just go from point A to point B as it instructs you. So, yeah, really neat. And today, I got through many segments. I think I went to three different towns. Three different towns. We ended up at the end of the stream in the capital city. Got a little you really, you're really 
selling me on this, Phil. And when I mean selling me, selling me to get the fuck away from this. Holy shit. You're boring me. It sounds terrible. This sounds terrible. Why would I want to watch this? Hmm. Hmm. I don't want to watch this unless I have sleep apnea or see insomnia. It feels like that would cure it. Fucking hell. It won't confused there because the capital city is huge and there's all these quests you're given immediately and they're like oh go sneak around at night and do this one and i can't find a way to do it i'm completely stumped on how i'm supposed to do it um but i'm having a good time with the game so far and the one of course the one criticism everyone has is the frame rate the frame rate of the game is poor on he says like it's it's poor like does it go to walmart does dragon's dog much <laughs> <laughs> does, does, Phil, you, you, sh you should have known about the horrible frame rate I, I don't know why you're even talking about it uh you, yeah i feel like you want to know the drill about all these poor horrible frame rate games that come out that they're poor in shop at walmart is you you know how they have analytics tools to see which part is have the frame rate stuff and there it'll, it'll get patched out the more the game's out there the more systems is on it will get ironed out oh yeah i feel like they do this shit on purple now but poor dragon's dogma shopping at walmart i feel bad for it now yeah it, it's one of the big capcom fuck-ups that kind of remind me of the olden days of capcom yeah, and was like, did you guys bite off more than you can chew? Like, what's going on here? And it's a, it's, it's, you know, you buy a game on release day. This is what happens, right? Pretty much. Yeah. You know, Jedi. Two words. Battlefront. Uh, yeah, that game's just fucked. Uh, I was gonna say Jedi Survivor, mm -hmm. where that game, yeah, that uh, sixty frames was pretty, whatever. Cyberpunk 2077. Th that was another one, definitely. Cyberpunk was absolutely, absolutely. Tw Battlefield 2044. You know it. You, you, what was it? Should it's I keep going on? <laughs> you could, but I just feel like the, oh, well, yeah. I feel like it's almost rare for a game to come out and be like, oh, this fucking works and not be broken. But, you know, it's people are like in about what, three months, there's going to be the argue, the article of saying Dragon's Dogma's fixed now. Mm -hmm. It good now on everything. Oh, one one platform has it bad. No, the game does not run well on most platforms. And people are pretty frustrated about that. I'm frustrated. Uh, outside of the frame rate, the graphics are great. Like the, the detail and the here. effects of What's spells that, are Come really good. Going. But man, that frame rate oh. chugs. You know, start. It's around thirty. It, every once in a while, it's above thirty, but it's mostly thirty. And then when Feel you're in combat, you sometimes you go up to like twenty. Well. That's not good. A mobile device. You know, yes. like this, it should be running better. It's not acceptable that Capcom couldn't get their their RE engine to run better for this style of game. That's but cool. that's Free engine the they're developing games on now. So I guess they kind of had to do the best of what, what they had, right? You have no idea about game development for fifteen years. Actually, you're just disrespectful of everything. Is there anything you're respectful to? You're just a disrespectful piece of shit. Mm. Drink, you I, fucking... I can't, I can't think of anything, to be honest with you. Like, he just, he just goes, like, oh, it's on the Wii engine. Like, yeah, Capcom has an engine. They're gonna use it. <laughs> Maybe their engine... What was the example I was gonna use? Uh, the biggest example was what? EA and... Fuck, what's their engine called? Uh, Frostbite. Frostbite, mm -hmm. thank you. And Sony has their Decima engine. Epic has the Unreal engine. Right, right, right. Yeah, they used that. Gorilla made the Decima engine, but yeah, a lot of games use the, you know. And Nintendo has an engine. They made it. Uh, Splatoon 3. Splatoon 3 uses it. Wonder uses it. I think something else uses it. I can't remember. But it's like, Phil, mate, you know, like the re-engine, 
is probably very good, but it seemed like they tried to. It's like they they took it and tried to stretch it out. It probably. Oh, and another it. thing, these guys, whoever made this game, probably worked. No, most definitely worked on a different engine. This is their first time on the re engine. That too. That too. They and, probably. And this is the. F- and this is like the first major open world action RPG on the re-engine. Like, you could say Monster Hunter Rise, but I think that game's more on the smaller scale. That's more of a hub world type of deal mm-hmm. in this game. Mm-hmm. Then but I yeah. believe Monster Hunter World is on a different engine as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like he says he's like, oh, the game runs poorly, and then he takes a sip going like, I hope it fails. It's like this dude wants the world to burn, and it only for him. He just wants, he just wants the world to burn. <laughs> yeah, there, there we go. Nice there, there, there you go, guys. There's your exclusive squishy for the, for the night. Uh, put you can mark that off on your bingo cards. I squishy guess. Squishy calendar. Yes. Yeah, the squishy calendar. Mm-hmm. Yes. So we had epic fights against groups of enemies, no. giant, you know, kind of mini boss enemies. Still not selling me on this, like, Phil. Out of the Colossus and other RPGs to fight. Um, great world exploration, uh, learning all kinds of different, uh, you know, systems like the crafting system and everything. That that will be the one other criticism that I will lay on the game. It much like the Dark Souls series, it doesn't tell you how to do half the stuff. You just either need to figure it out yourself by chance. <laughs> goons. Uh, hired goons. Yes, we are hired hoods. All right. All right. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Phil. Hired goons. That is gaming. Figure it out on your own. Come on, Phil. It's not that hard. You don't want to figure shit out. You're brain I know. dead. And I'm pretty sure there's a section in the game where it has a tutorial. And he just didn't read it. Or there is like a note section or a journal where you could just... Uh huh. There and read what to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure it's all there, but he's not reading it. Indeed. Nope. In some cases, or someone has to tell you, you know. So I'm streaming, and I'm like, man, I don't know how I'm supposed to get this thing. Oh, you could craft it in your inventory. How? Well, you you just got to figure it out. It's there. There's a thing that says combine. You can just. God, he is just. He wants everything to be like a walkthrough. You, he is sweet baby. He wants everything to be, you know, do this, do that, do this, do this. Oh, do that. Here's a tutorial. I actually hate that kind of shit. It's- Remember, he, it, he's the reason why God of War Ragnarok is the way it is. So Thanks, Phil. Fuck you. Like, he wants... That's why he has to tell you all this stuff because of this sack of shit. And he's like, I'm so prolific and great. No, actually, you suck. Mess around. Why well, didn't it have a, a tutorial for that? Don't bother need, with it. Not everything needs a fucking tutorial. Like climbing enemies and stuff. They don't explain it until um, you run into what, the, year the uh, Cyclops in the story. 2024. You can run into other yeah. bigger enemies way before that and have no clue what yeah, you're supposed so to take them in down. In 2024, we do still do tutorials? Um, there's we a, do a lot of tutorials. Times today when there's we do nothing but not tutorials. Explain, and I don't know if they just forgot or they just don't care. But it's like, so, man, you didn't play the first game. You're at a big disadvantage in this one. Oh, so you go. So back in our day, mm-hmm. we're of that age when we grew up on the NES. Super- Nothing had tutorials. It wasn't even exactly. a wasn't even a prompt to tell you how to use a gun. You had to figure all that shit out yourself. If you wanted to learn how to play the game, you open up that manual and you read it. And nothing's in the game. Right, and now now games have to show you like. How to perfect parry and shit. You're like, well, you got to learn how to perfect parry. And, and then you have to do it like four times before the game lets you go. And it's like a lot of games should just let you go. Like, you sure you want to skip this? Yes, I want to skip this. Mm-hmm. I want to skip this. Yes, I am very sure of it. Um, Still, still having tons of fun. You know, After five and a half hours, I had a great time. The audience was a mixed bag. What I mean by that is some people loved it. They were like, wow, this is very refreshing because unlike the other RPGs, it's it's a lot of action. Wow, this is refreshing. Mm-hmm. What are you, Mentos? So epivescent. 
Wow, this is refreshing. You know what game is just like that? Oh, we can't refer to that game. That game's not refreshing because it has bikinis, right, Phil? Asexual idiot. He's a married man, you know. Yeah, no, really. He's married to a blimp. Yeah, like there's any good time year. in the open world, there's tons of action going on, and people like it. <laughs> Literally a good year blimp. Some people are like, oh, it's just another RPG again, and we don't want another one. You know. Hey, Phil, if you wasn't such a dingus, you could be playing Princess Peach Showtime. Yeah. But you're an idiot. It's like... You hate like, Nintendo. Well, either more drudging up video games that gives you, what, $111? Mm -hmm. Congrats. You could go back to Street we Fighter. Are. You can go back to Tekken. You could go back to Street Fighter. Yeah, by the, back to Final Fantasy. Mm -hmm. Star, sea, of, um, sea of Stars. Sea of Stars. Heavenly Stars, too. <laughs> I'm just saying, Phil, you're an idiot. Are you have RPG Overload? Why are you playing this one? Which I explained. I'm only playing it for a day. We're going to finish up the two that I'm playing, and then we're going to come back to this after the fact. I'm not just playing this nonstop. No. Okay? So, uh, and then you have people who like, I guess it didn't show up today because, like, the first stream had pretty good attendance. The late stream did not. So I guess people already, after one people stream, burnout, you know what? I'm going to be honest with streams. you. Very similar yeah. to what happened with. Yeah, people don't even show up people to this watch stream. the vlogs, so, you know. Yeah. I mean, they could watch the blogs. They could, they have to, also, to account is, do I like this person? No, I'm not watching it. Is it going to be boring? You burn people too much with your bullshit. And plus, everyone hates you. All right, so next Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. Easter. The, the Easter. Um, so the rest of the world start changing from daylight savings on and off. Okay. Yep. Including Australia, except for New South Wales. We have to wait till April 7th. That's right. So. That's right, Peter Cottontail. Hopping down the bunny trail. Hippity hop pop Easter's on its way. All right, we'll have an Easter sale. Mm -hmm. Final Fantasy VII Re So People are going to be missing his streams because of the daylight savings adjustment. So. But he should miss his streams anyway. They're terrible. Mm-hmm. First stream, they were engaged. After that, kind of died out. I just, I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. All we had, I'm sure you were, he you were here for it, D-Dog, and I was here for it. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a great Splatfest stream for everyone was there. We had uh, plenty of engagement. It didn't die out. This motherfucker doesn't want to engage with anyone. He just plays the game. Engaged. He's married. Yeah, he doesn't want to get this motherfucker is married to the Utah where, you know, polygamy is a legal thing. But yeah. And Pac-Man's happening because you can do the Pac-Man mm -hmm. with the Pac-Man cereal. You can do the Pac-Man. All these RPGs are just too much. I know it for a fact, even though I really like this one, it's very different from the others. If you like these games so much, why are you complaining about all the time of this shit? Hey, I love, I love cereal. I fucking love cereal, guys. Fucking love cereal. Just, just can't get enough of it. But you know what? I've been eating tricks, man. Oh, I, I got to eat another variant bowl of tricks again. Fuck. I really love tricks, though. Really, rabbit. Tricks are for kids. Fuck. I really love tricks, guys. I, I mean, you guys come to the stream to eat, to let me watch, let me watch, eat tricks and tricks with the little with the little uh circles on them the old tricks with the shapes and the new trips that care the berry carry bit the uh, tricks you know it, all this shit and then here he is being an idiot mm -hmm. for a viewing audience people don't want to come to this channel and just watch an rpg constantly and that's all that's fucking coming out really it's, it's ridiculous whose fault is that whose fault is that sounds like dsp's fault mm-hmm you're the provider, right? You buy these games, right? You buy these games for people to to see what the game's about, right? Right? You make these you make these uh executive decisions to what games you're going to play, right? Right. 
you bought Final Fantasy and played it for 17 hours or 15 hours of whatever the fuck you were going to do. You bought this game to shelve it for Boulder's Gate 3. Why not finish up Boulder's Gate 3 and then get to Dragon's Dogma? I know. I know why. I know why. Uh, day one views. Money. Yeah. Right. Views like, money. Right, but your heart wasn't in Dragon's Dogma. Your heart's stuck in Boldarian's ass or whatever the fuck it was. Yeah, in uh, Bolter's Gate 3 because it gets you 100 bucks down by the river. And then you're and then you're playing like a dragon, which, you know, we're are we coming up for two months in three days? Hold on. What's no? Yeah. Two months. In yeah, because days. It was, yeah, because it was January 26. Yeah, we're coming up two months in two days in three days of you. It's like yeah. fucking hell. How can you spend two months on a 60 hour RPG? When it's your job to play video games. Right, right, right. Your job is to get through a lot of games and, and show a lot of games, you know? Like that's your job, and you're and you're wasting it on countless other bullshit. What's up, Swedish Traveler? What's up, everyone? Come on, dude. I was able to stream like a dragon. Less, you know, you had more time to stream that game than I did. Mm -hmm. I have a full-time job. And I was able to stream that shit and beat it before you. Fuck. I had a part-time job. But these motherfuckers, it's, it, he just doesn't get it done. He doesn't get it done. He just doesn't get it done. You know, at this point, he just, it, uh, he just buys games. He's just, he, he's just a picky eater. He just does not devour this shit. He, you're too slow. You're too slow, and it's starting to piss me off. It's pissing off a lot of people, right? Yeah, we, I think people said it before. Was if you ever, well, Parma said it was if you ever see me play. Uh, well, I did play it. Uh, uh Sonic Frontiers, and then he plays Sonic Frontiers. It's night and day. It is. <laughs> I'm a bat on fire, and he's over there trying to check out the scenery. Yeah, like, I gotta play that game. Yeah, if he skips the podcast and just get on with the gameplay, he will get things done more quickly. There's a saying. Of course. There's a saying, like just like Splatfest today, you get things done on stream. Like once your stream starts, you get you get business done. Like, if I'm playing Splatfest, it's four hours. We got to fill four hours with something. And he, he talks about his, like, Phil's day off and shit and all this other stuff. And it's like, do you really have to sit here on camera to talk about that? Like, of course, we're doing that in hoodlum hours right now, but we don't do as many as we used to. We used to do, like, one a, one every day. Now we do one one every month, maybe two. When the need when the needs happen, you know, it's like a bat signal. But it's like, bro, you do how many of these? Six six a day. Don't play video games. And a lot of it's begging and recapping of things. I, I feel like this is how I feel, because maybe I don't watch his gameplay and I well I talked we talk about him a lot, is he talks nothing but it seems like all he does is talk about the games he's playing and it feels like it's always it nothing moves even though it does move it's like suspended animation it's really weird mm -hmm. it's like boulder's gate 3 we did this thing okay like a dragon we did this thing boulder's gate gate 3 we did this thing dragon's dogma oh, not dragon's yeah dragon's dogma we did this thing and like a dragon we did this thing and he, and then and then he likes using the word variety. He's like, and we're going to go over here for variety. We're going to go over here for variety. And it's like, you're not a variety pack of fucking potato chips. <laughs> Get fucked. The fucking tremendous amount of RPGs that are still coming out as if these game developers have no fucking conscious thought about them. The you could play Princess Peach Showtime, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> or Simple fix right there. Or just pick and choose what games to play and focus on the damn games like a sane person. Or you could be playing MLB The Show like like a certain idiot, me. I 
like MLB The Show. Game landscape has too many right now. Wouldn't marry it, but so, I like it. I like the game. A steak and egg burrito. Well, that does sound good. Don't make me hungry now. I, I make good steak and egg burritos, though. They're small, but they're really good. I used to make them when I was in high school. Just don't tell. Just don't tell Duty. Who? I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, detractor. Everyone hates him. Yeah. Yeah, everyone hates him. Support today was okay. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't Babe, terrible. Do you want me to make you a steak and egg burrito? All right, kind of, kind of. Here's, here's. So I was gonna ask, do you? What do you think? How, how it went. On a day when I play Baldur's um, Gate, I get a ton of support. Carl. Let's just say he went off on Kotaku, and we're gonna cover it soon. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, he's gonna go off on Kotaku like there's no one's business. Remember, this man never worked a day in his life in gaming journalism. Uh, actually, if. He he, Imagine this dude. If this was your colleague, he would be strung up by his tie. But he has a certificate. And you can shove it up his ass. You can shove it. You can shove the certificate and the trophy up his ass. You probably enjoy it because a lot of things are probably up there. Mm-hmm. Support for Baldur's Gate, and I get almost no support for for Like a Dragon at night today. There was decent support on the first stream, not as much as when I played Baldur's Gate, but there was also decent support on the late stream. Bro, you can't, you you can't uh, measure Baldur's Gate to this game, but I get it. It's a day one. You thought you were gonna get more, and well, we all thought you were gonna yeah. get more, and we're gonna no, keep thinking one. that. Nope, <laughs> he did not get more. So no. kind of even. He out wouldn't have got the same for um, Ryzen of the Rowan. Indeed. Uh, Maybe you should have done that. Maybe you should have bought Rise of the Ronin in this game. But it's like, Phil, you can't pick and choose. If you're going to do this, this is the other thing that, that pisses me off. He's like, here, go like, oh, no one gave me money for it. You can't pick and choose. You have to you have to bang out these games, but you take too long. Got it. Got it. Be entertaining. That too. Princess B Showtime game explains already done before I even had it in anyone's hands. They had that game okay. dusted and, and done. Mm-hmm. All right, so for um, what's it called? Nerd Cube's birthday, mm -hmm. he did an eight-hour stream of um, Vegas Bus, Ooh. a video game that was made for the PlayStation One. It's got like um, eight-bit graphics, and he played that for eight hours. And do you know how many viewership he had for it? How many? 15,000. Oh, that's a lot. Mm hmm Now, why do you think that would be? Because he's entertaining. <gasps> ah! Give G Million a star. Indeed. I better get a golden star. It, it will oh. be a golden star, indeed. It's a, it's a triple golden star with a reach around. Indeed. Awesome. Even though yeah. it's a big new release... Again, it's an RPG. I know it's going to happen. When I start actually playing other games of interest, the interest will come back. People will come back to watch. And no, 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 not anymore. I'm here. I'm fucking here. And I will tell you, no, not this time. Any other time? Sure. Not this time. There's, there's at least the bookkeeper will hit you with a stack of books. And keep you there. Fuck off. You have to go through so many enemies. And where are the enemies? But it ain't going to happen when every game's an RPG. I know that. Okay? You know, I'll say it. He, every time he talks, every time he talks about these games, he sounds like a guy that he just doesn't want to finish his food. He's like, I, I have to eat my broccoli. Why is there so much broccoli? Mm -hmm. No cheese? Why do I have to eat peas? Why is there so many RPGs? You bought the games. You mm -hmm. bought these. I didn't buy them. You did. You did. There are other games you can play if you don't want to play them, you know. Yeah, there's other games. There's other things to do. Mm -hmm. No one said you had to play Dragon's Dogma. No one said you had to play Rise of the Ronin Cannon. And no one said you had to beat these games. It's you. Yeah, it's you. It's you that put you in this arbitrary 
thing of three hours a day with this podcast and all that stuff. And you'll never learn. You'll never learn. You'll never learn. Like, that's the thing. You're so stuck in this routine. You're so stuck in this shit that you get nothing done. You get nothing done. Like, man, let's say you go. No, all I was going to say was, dude, you have a community board. That's where your schedule is. But no, you persist to tell us the schedule every single freaking day. Right. It's like, why? Not just once a day. In the morning, Mm -hmm. on the daily wrap, on the community Mm -hmm. post, on shitter. Mm -hmm. Am I missing anywhere else? No, no. Oh, he probably does it on Instagram, but we don't go there. I I don't even want to see his Instagram. Mm -hmm. We get it. You have a schedule. Move on. But your your schedule means nothing because you don't even stick to it half the times. Right. You don't care. Anyway, I had a good time with it today. Now... It goes back on hiatus. It, well, not really back on hiatus, but it goes on hiatus on the shelf. He buys a game and then puts it on the shelf. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What a what a guy. I should say. As of this week, the rest of this week, we're pushing to finish Baldur's Gate 3 and Like a Dragon. Once they're done, then we can go full force. And- You're fired. Get out of my office. And bring back that laptop you took. You're fired. Like, you, you're still not you're still not done with these games. For fuck's sake. ...in other games, and I'm kind of thinking it'll likely be some Dragon's Dogma alternated with something else, possibly Alone in the Dark, which seems like a horror game that would be right up my alley, and a lot of people are actually enjoying it. Does it seem like to me, D-Dog, that all he does is just hype it up to kill it? Yeah. It, yeah, it seems like it lately. He, he, he used to be a really good hype man about like, oh my god, I can't wait to play this game, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be great. And then it's just him looking constipated as hell. Mm-hmm. Remember, this is the guy that hyped everything for it to be a disappointing. Mm-hmm. But it's <laughs> yes. not his fault. He did nothing wrong. It's the develop- developer's fault and the game's fault. Everything's your, your fault. fault. Everything's your fault, Phil. But you don't know it yet. Mm-hmm. You know, he's hyping these games up, right? But it was when the time to get, when the games come, oh, you guys chose this. I didn't show shit. Yeah, he he cannot blame himself for anything. Yeah, no, it wasn't his fault. He did nothing wrong. Indeed, you guys wanted it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You just really hypocritical. Yeah. Like it now, but he never so takes responsibility for anything. No, never. Just blame game, blame everyone else, RPG overload and all that stuff. It's like, mm-hmm. he, I said this in a video and I'll say it. He caused his own hell. This is this is your fault. Yeah. Like, any, remember when I finished Final Fantasy? Yeah, because I got it done in a week. Mm-hmm. You raged, but you still got the thing done. Got it done. Uh, a little behind schedule. This is my own personal schedule, not not anyone else's but yeah you know it's like it yeah it's you know this is how it happens but not dsp gaming i would never give you an assignment because it'll never be done ever i mean we, why why give this man a game to go like hey dsp i need this game done in a week not I only do it we'll give you a laptop not only he's going to play other games and fuck around, mm-hmm. he's going to wait until the embargo so he can, so he can uh, lord it over people so he can get money off of it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, no, we, 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 we want an opportunity for you to show the game off before it's released. And this is what you do. Like, that's the thing about fallout four was he never like, had anything ready to go for the uh for the stream like mm-hmm. game explain let's use princess p showtime because they beat it 100 percent it had a guide out blah 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 they probably had andre uh who never didn't play the game 
uh, go through the game live on stream. Beat the game on stream, Phil. Something you never will do. You know, get the game done. And you, you see what I mean? You're already losing. You're already losing. You can't beat the game on day release because... What was it? He, there was no tutorials. There was no other videos he could sit there and watch and steal the ideas from. And he had to spend time with his wife, so he could only play for three hours. She's, yeah, she's boring, and she doesn't. She doesn't even like bikinis. She can go fuck off, Phil. Those on the day, and then the night streams would be like Final Fantasy VII, and maybe co-op with my wife. In the playthrough of Beyond, uh, Maybe. Beyond Two Souls that we're going to do. In nope. So that nope. could be some good variety there, and I think that might work. So, yeah. Or so just if you enjoy the game Dragon's have. Dogma 2 today, let me know. Mm -hmm. Like the videos on my channel if you enjoy them, and leave comments. On Phil, Phil, everyone's giving you massive thumbs down. Mm -hmm. Oh, did I? I, I, I You wasn't here, but I, I said this during Splatfest. You know how many thumbs down he got for Dragon's Dogma? I don't have that plugin installed, so I don't know. It, well, you don't. It's it's on Twitter. Four hundred and eighty three. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> to one hundred and eleven likes. <laughs> and that was on the stream, right? That was on the day stream. Yeah. I don't know what the night stream was, but. Everyone hates you, Phil. Like, Phil, if. This is a sign. Just get off the internet. Mm -hmm. Let me know your thoughts about this game, and if you want to see it in the rotation and all of that. Okay. Yeah, well, I internet. had a great time. Going to get a job. Can't wait. Was the same plan? Mm -hmm. Squishy. Indeed, exactly. squishy. Indeed. Back to it, and it sucks. Now we have to wait like a week, but we got to finish these lingering playthroughs. Okay. Um. Keep in mind, you can always support the play. We've got to finish it for the stream. You can do it. No, no, no. You got to play. This is your problem. This is your yeah, problem. Yeah. He has to finish him. So shut the fuck up about co-op with your wife and finish these fucking games. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. You're the one that's not finishing these uh, these projects. You're the one that doesn't enjoy the middle of these projects. You like starting up projects, but once you get to the middle of them or the end of them, you just lose focus of it. You don't like. You're not a problem solver. You're a problem. You give people problems. You are a problem. He he likes starting them because he likes the day one views and the day one money. But once right. they started getting stagnant, he doesn't enjoy them as much. Mm -hmm. He turns that smile to a frown. Yeah. He was super <sighs> thanks on the video. Oh, oh um, G Million, he was falling asleep um, in Like a Dogma. Yeah, well, not surprising. Indeed, fuck off, Phil. Tip the descriptions in the description of every video. It would be great to get some support for this playthrough, okay? Now, tomorrow, oh, yeah. Saturday, the 23rd, we are back to the normal schedule of Baldur's Gate 3 on the first stream. Ew. And Like a Dragon on the late stream. The good God, you mean where you get no money? Or anything, really? Or no money? No money. No money. No money. No money. Well, it looks like his his uh thumbs down come came back to earth. Uh on the late stream he got forty two dollars of instant money and he got twenty bucks in super chats. Eighty thumbs down, sixty thumbs up, three fifty uh three fifty three. You are floundering, my brother. Well, actually you're not your brother, I hate you, but that's not the point. You are floundering. Yeah. And his ratio is Bad. Like he's getting ratioed hard. Right. When you get more thumbs down than thumbs up, that that tells you something. Yeah, when your thumbs down are literally four times higher than your thumbs up, that tells you something too. That means everyone hates you. That's what that means. Figure it out, Phil. Figure it the fuck out. The news is we are definitely pushing into the end game of both games. In Baldur's Gate, we are in the final optional mission before essentially you start heading up to the setup for the end game. 
So we're getting there. And then in Like a Dragon, we're about to finish chapter 12 and head into chapter 13, which is the next to last chapter. So as long as I stick to my guns and I play it Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I think we may beat these games by the end of the week or be this close to like one more streaming day and then we finish them, okay? So let's see how that goes. And uh, I thank you all for those, everyone who was here today had a fun, engaging time with me and I really, I'm liking the game and I can't wait to get back to it when we get through everything else. So thank you so much for understanding that it has to go on the shelf until we finish up this other stuff, all right? But in the meantime, hmm. I wish you all a safe and fun night. I hope that you had a good time with me today. And if you're watching those videos... No, no, I don't have a fun time with you. If I, I want to arrange your guts, that would be a fun time. Like, yeah. like I, I would love to just sit you down and just and just speed bag your chest so you can I can just tell you things. Because how else are you going to listen? Mm-hmm. Just a good old Enjoy fashioned them. beating. Yeah, yeah. You get strung up like like a fucking steak, and we just start pounding. See you tomorrow when we get into the end game push. Oh, you won't see me tomorrow. Games. All right. Thanks a lot. RPG Overload will conclude soon. Have a good. No, night. actually, it won't conclude soon. If you ask me, RPG It'll Overload has an ending story. Fuck yeah! It, it, if you ask me, it never stopped. Mm-hmm. It never fucking stopped. Um, he played uh, a boss today, right? Yeah. In the early stream. And then he was playing that same boss again in the late stream. I was like, is he just doubling back now? Is this the Queen's Bloods cards all over again? He really no. is. Yeah. And he had a segment in his show today about how he used to beat games really fast. Now he slowed down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he, he was like, oh, life is like a pendulum. Oh, yeah, that, that stupid analogy. He's a He's pendulum. Like He's a pendulum. He's a motherfucking pendulum. All right, let's get to let's get to this uh, DSP news. And uh, we are certified journalists here. Gaming journalists. Uh, you don't have to take a class or anything. You can just cry to see you to sweet baby. No, no, no. Uh, I, I'm I'm certified. I I used to have a paperboy route. It's cool. Ah, yes, yes, yes. D Dog uh, certified us. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a website called Tekken Games, so I'm totally I'm totally uh uh you know certified to uh, tell you uh, about all the all the dumb shit that he's about to say. I am uh. Yeah. I'm I'm a veteran YouTube channel. Yes, so, right. I know everything. Three million read a newspaper once. Yes, oh, it, and if you if anyone else talks about this, they normally glom over it or doesn't give a fuck. We give a fuck. Mm -hmm. So he. So let's get right to this bullshit. Mm -hmm. Because they're jealous of you and what you make. They're upset that people may have expectations that moving forward, what? all our. What? You chose a weird time to start this. I, I no no. I want you to know that I started at exactly where it, where it says DSPN News, and that's what it started. This is what DSPN News start the, the thing started off as. I shit you not. What the fuck? RPGs would have to live up to what you just made, and now you're deciding you just don't want to make the game. The you know, no DLC, no sequel, nothing. No DLC, no sequel, no nothing. We're surmising what this means is that they may go back to say Divinity, which was the game they made before this. Divinity. I have a question for you guys. To be honest, mm -hmm. yes, yep. case, is Divinity the um, Dungeons and Dragons as well? Oh, he's an idiot. Not really. Oh, Divinity to it. It is term based, but that's about it. He's an idiot. So he cut out a part talking about the Larian thing because when you get to DSPN News, mm -hmm. it's literally that segment. He's an idiot. Yeah, well, he probably forgot to um, put on the label. Yeah. Right. Well, he actually started the, the Larian thing. Prior to that, it was actually in the in the intro because he had a short intro today, right? And so it's all over the place, yeah. So you jump to this and you're like, "What?" Mm -hmm. 
he's talking about so Dungeons and Dragons wants to be sold off. Hasbro wants to sell it off. Is that what it is? Nope. Okay. So, okay. So the basis of the story is Lyrians are saying that they're not going to do another Baldur's Gate ever again. They're not doing DLC. I wouldn't say Baldur's ever. Again. You never know. You know. No, well, that's what they they, they said, right? That they, right. That they're done. They, they're going to concentrate on something else. And DSP is like, why? Ooh, this is your bread and butter. Other other streamers are jealous of you and all the rest of it. You should do keep doing this. No, yeah. maybe they don't want to keep doing it. You know, uh, unlike DSP, they won't keep making a Brecken record and, and keep flogging the same dead horse, aka Wait. his wife, over and over and over again. Here's the thing. This is what mm-hmm. DSP is not understanding. Mm-hmm. They don't own the rights to D and D. They have to right. pay a licensing fee. You know how much yeah. money Larian made off Boulder Skate Three, and you know how much money that they had to pay Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro for that. Mm-hmm. They didn't I even don't want to know, but it's probably a shitload of money. And they probably did. Remember, what was it? Now go ahead. And also. And to get that license and to make this game, like this game was made on a shoestring budget too, or whatever shoestring budget that it was. Like it, they honestly didn't want to give it up. But the game's a success. The game, you know, everyone's got a copy. Everyone's got four copies. But it, it's just like D and D is more popular than it ever been thanks to this game. Yeah, yeah. And speaking yeah. of copies. I'm getting my Xbox copy in April or May, and it's going to be on four disc instead of three. Oh, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Now, and- remember last year Christmas? No, no sorry, not cr- like Christmas gone, but the Christmas before that and Hi, Shiloh, mm-hmm. I saw you. Right? Um, so remember Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, right? Decided to charge for every... Um, What's his sheet that you created in um, D and D? Because I remember that because they came that whole whole thing happened before the Dungeons and Dragons um, Thieves movie came out to the point where that's where my cousin lost her job because Hasbro decided no, nah, we don't need one entertainment anymore. You're done. And think, and that, hey, Anthony, and that happens so, a lot. Yeah, so to the point where there was a huge backlash. And um, people are saying, what was it? Why should we pay for a sheet? We've already bought the guide. So why, why are you charging us per sheet? It's, you know, you, you, you want us, you, you're literally, we create the stories and now you want us to pay for that content? Right. You're charging us to make the stories. And like I said, it was a huge backlash about it. Um, and to the point where it's like, oh, no, we we didn't do that. It was it was a miscommunication error and all the rest of it. So, as I can see with Larry, and it's like they're probably still saying no. What was it? Um, if you're an individual, yes, but if you're a company like yourself, you're still gonna have to pay. So it's like okay, you know, we we did everything we need to do with Boulder Skate. Let's move on to something else. Indeed, yeah. But, but and, DSP and wanna, doesn't understand that, and and they want to make their own project. They want to. Yeah stab at their own um game you know it's like mm. why do you want to consistently make a game like in that franchise don't you want to break out and do your own thing exactly you don't want to be known as the boulders gate guys yeah why do you think we have destiny because the halo guys and let's do destiny instead and of- also larian has a lot of they're they're basically CD Projekt Red right now. Or remember when they made The Witcher and became the Darlings? Their next game's going to be huge, but we'll see if they learn from CD Projekt Red's uh, mistakes and other other companies too, like Bethesda. Remember, you know, you're you're now Bethesda. You're you're pretty much, you know, what what's your your next move? I'm not going to say it's going to kill you, but. Your next move better be good. There, I'm not. I, there's a track record here, to, and yes, you can succeed. I'm not here to say your next game is gonna fail, but the expectations are your next game is gonna fail. It's gonna be astronomically higher than you know because now you're gonna be under a microscope. 
Yeah, when you set the bar that high, you, you're guaranteed to fail. It's, right. It's inevitable. So. Right. Someone, someone's gonna nitpick the shit out of it. Mm-hmm. Like, like Skyrim was too high, and Bethesda never. I don't want to say never lived up to it. That's not the point. But they never reached that high. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I'll I'll give you even a better example. No Man's Skies and Hello Games. Right? Remember what yeah. happened when he set the bar too high and yeah. massively failed when it didn't deliver? Right? But then they came around and you know they they made it better and all the rest of it and everybody forgave him. But then what did um? What's his name? What's his name? Murray did again. Oh, we've got a new game and did the exact same thing all over again. It was like, dude, did you not learn from the last time? No, it, it's like Peter Moore um, advertising a fable game. Oh, Peter Money Hugh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, yep. you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 Peter Money Hugh. What was it? The only reason why I know his name off by heart is if you ever watch um, Guru Larry. The guy cannot, he, he, what was it? Literally, Will Smith would be going there and slapping and say, could you get that Fables guy's name out of your freaking mouth? He promises too much. Mm-hmm. Production values that they had in Baldur's Gate 3 because I played Divinity and I got about 60 hours in and I couldn't proceed. I was bored to tears and so was everybody else. At least with Baldur's Gate 3, it had enough production value Wait, to make it pause feel. pause the video. Mm-hmm. If everyone was bored of Divinity Original Sin 2, why does everyone keep saying to play the fucking game? Right. I right. love bored, Divinity. Bored to tears, he says in this, but you said it. You said exactly what I was thinking. So, yes. And also, everyone gave you money. Not a single fucking stream you didn't make money on this. Not a fucking stream you didn't make your 150. So, how are they bored to tears if you got your money? Were you bored to tears? Were you bored to tears? Nope. And also, Idiot. people... Also, people paid you to play this game, and you dropped it. This is why you're here in Boulder's Gate, because you're a fucking asshole. And we have to hold his hand, because he couldn't play Divinity. That was the problem. All right? He only had to watch a few tutorials. I I got Divinity. I sort of, like, played it. It was like, oh, yeah, it's a little bit hard. I watched Spiffing Brit's tutorial, and how you could do the, um, the potato glitch. And, dude, the game was freaking awesome. Yeah, I mean, I have it on PC. If I really wanted to, I could just do cheat engine and just make it into dumb RPG. Mm-hmm. There you go. Like or Divinity or into dumb RPG. But you're an idiot. Oh, like an awesome narrative experience with big cutscenes and everything. When Divinity didn't have any of that, right? <clears throat> because they didn't have the so, budget for it. Hopefully. Yeah, it was whatever the they same do next game. ends up being good. But the the thing is, people were completely godsmacked by this. They were like, "What? We were so stop talking about what other people think, especially from a sack of shit that doesn't know shit." Hang on, what was it? You hated the game before you played it. You were bagging on it like nobody's business. It's gonna be like Divinity. I don't play Divinity. Everybody thinks they should stop making me play Divinity and all the rest of it. I'm never gonna play this game. Until they literally bought it for you and offered to give you money for it, that's the only time that you played it. And it was then it was the only one that was making you money. Oh, you couldn't have enough of Baldur's Gate. So shut the fuck up, Bill. Literally shut the... Yeah, just, just go back to your, to your fucking playpen, baby. Yeah, if the people were enjoying that game. You wasn't enjoying it, and you thought, I could just drop it. Be and play my next game, and it's gonna be okay. Guess what, Phil? This game is still lingering. And one day, just like the Charm Swords Fear in Persona 3, you're gonna go, Guess what, guys? You love Baldur's Gate so much. I'm going back to Divinity Original Sin. Mm hmm. Is that game on PS4? It is. Yeah, I think that's where you played it on. To be honest, didn't get a, didn't get a, disc of it probably but it's probably behind the couch like with um mafia when, uh when did divinity come out hang on a second. okay google when did D- divinity original sin 2 come out 
Divinity Original Sin 2 S initial release date is the 14th of September 2017. There you no, go. It would have been digital. All right. All right. So Divinity Original Sin came out a lot later than I thought it was. All right. But still, not that long ago, if you think about it, Phil. So hoping because it did so well that you were going to make more because we loved seeing DND come out this way. And now, I mean, DND, man, they're fucked. First, they had a movie, right? A mo what was it? Like Honor Among Thieves? The movie was absolutely outstanding, and apparently it tanked at the box office, and no one. You know, Phil, not everything that's outstanding people go see. And and then another thing, Phil, guess what? What? Streaming services and places where you can rent the movie and buy the movie digitally uh, keeps those movies alive. So not everything goes by the box office. you damn right. Um, it, the... Like I said, it was one entertainment that did D and D movie. It has nothing to do with Larry. And why is he comparing the two? It's not the same company. They're not even the same ballpark. Exactly. It's like he's jackass. Stupid. One saw it. That movie is superb. If you didn't see the Honor Among Thieves movie, I strongly recommend it. It's got an excellent cast, a well written plot, and it takes fantasy elements and makes them fun. For a modern audience. It makes it I, fun. So many people didn't see the movie. It's that good. And now here they yeah, go. Game of because the Year. Because there was three dumb oh, Dungeons and Dragon movies prior to that, and they were crap. Mm hmm. He's really yeah, crap. Like, you can easily yeah. say this was the best Dungeons and Dragons movie. Yeah. Yes. And my cousin worked on all four movies. Her company did. So. Yeah. And, and apparently, according to Phil, Smith's son's in it. Mm hmm. Sam Phil. Yeah. Justin Smith, apparently, because all black people are alike. <laughs> exactly. By the way, the game developers dropping out and not making it anymore. So now it's like DD is left holding their own back. JC, you know you're not supposed to take his uh movie suggestions ever. His movie selections is literally charades with arms. Like and and and, and you know what? Me and G, we watched it. We watched it together. Mm -hmm. I watched it twice, one in the theaters and one with you. We have we have the review. Well, you have to be a member, but we have the review. Go to my channel, it's up there. Yeah, go to go to G Million's channel. If you want to hear our opinions about Dungeons and Dragons Among Thieves, we watched it. We watched it. Oh, and Bad, if you watched Phil's review about it, apparently Michelle Rodriguez hasn't done anything since prior to Dungeons and Dragons. Wait a minute. What? She was she was in the fast movies. Yes. But as far as Phil's oh. concerned, she hadn't done anything since oh. Dungeons and Dragons. D Doc, oh, yeah, can, you, can you link G Millions channel real quick in the chat room? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Their IP, but who do you give it to next? Because you think anyone's gonna live up to the expectations that now Larian has created for if they make a bald Well no, no. What up, Squish? What? What? Bur are we still getting that burrito? Yeah, you got to make one for the class. Oh, I thought I was just gonna make it for my boyfriend. That's fine. But if D Dog and Raven want one, then I'll make some more. It's a lot of burritos. Yeah, fuck yeah, that sounds good. I'll make it. You, you use DoorDash to deliver to me in Australia. And burritos. You you know it. DoorDash and deliveries in Australia. Mm -hmm. Gate four. They're kind of fucked. <clears throat> so that kind of sucks for anyone who likes D and D, and for anyone who spent an insane amount of effort trying to learn the lore of Baldur's Gate three. Well, Phil, people that play that game really like the game. They don't need to learn the lore. It's not a fucking slog. Yeah, and guess what? If they like something, they'll learn about it. They'll read up on it. Or I'm pretty sure the majority of the audience are D and D players. The way he makes it. There's a PC game called Baldur's Gate 3. D&D. &D. I love D&D. &D. I play it every day with my friends. And they already Bro. Know. Bro. There we go. I sent both links. Thank you. And you like them there, Apples. Thanks, dog. Are they crispy? You're welcome, sir. Bro. Well, you probably just wasted your time because 
There ain't no Baldur's Gate 4 from Larian, which means the next one will probably suck, and you probably wasted your time learning all that shit. <laughs> Sad, man. Because I'm well, hey. What do you mean you wasted your time learning that sh What? Mm hmm. He, he never played um, Lord of the Rings Online. Oh, for frack's sake, Phil. And, and you know what? Another thing they can do? They can go out and buy a D&D &D set and play with their friends because they played Baldur's Gate. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like reading a manga than watching the anime. Yep. He makes it sound like, oh, Baldur's Gate. Like they're being forced, like it's some kind of elective for class or some shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. It was, it's, it's like, why should I learn al um, algebra? You'll never use it in the real world. Yeah, right. Indeed. Yeah, listen, I'm one of them. I spent I'm a hundred, almost 130 hours into my playthrough trying to finish it. I learned so much lore about D&D that I'll probably never use again ever in my whole lifetime. So, why wow. Wow. What a just a piece of shit right there. Yeah. He's like, uh, hang on. What was it? What was it? Pause that thing there. All right. So, he'll never learn anything about it ever again in his lifetime. Like, what was it when Arison um took all the stuff and then left and took all the good gear? So, yeah, he's never going to learn that, that that will ever come up again in his real life situations. Oh, for frack's sake. You don't give a fuck about this. When he goes like, oh, I never learned about Boulder's Gate. It's like, do you even know how to pretend that your audience wants to see you suffer through it? That's why they keep giving you a hundred dollars. That's why you that's why this you're playing games too slowly. But whatever, Boulder's Gate gets your money, so you don't care. Wow, what a great investment of time that was, huh? <clears throat> oh, he's incredibly shitty. Hold on one second. Okay, everybody, continue. Ah. Uh, that, Hold on one second. Was it? So that was when he banned somebody and used the pause button. <laughs> I just and, love. And he also paused the video, video to blow his nose. I'm too. sorry. I just love the hard edit there. Just the hardest of edits. Because you're not used to seeing it. <laughs> just the hardest of edits. And then what do we come back to when we when we come back to the hardest of edits? Hold on one sec, dude. Oh. How come when I edited his that thing for the music video? His head was in the exact same spot every freaking time. That was nine edits. And he couldn't even get the one edit. And then he says, hold on for one second. Well, we are watching this on demand, so he can fuck himself. And then he, we come back to silence. Mm -hmm. We come back to silence. Yeah, because okay, he's everybody, used to continuing going... on with the news. Our next story exactly that. is pretty interesting. It's about Destiny yeah, 2. Go. Oh, God. Those who don't know because you don't follow Destiny 2, well, I don't blame you because a lot of people don't anymore. See, this is the thing that I hate so much about you is you lead the witness story and you're like, well, I, I hate Destiny 2. It's like, well, guys, let me tell you about Destiny 2. I fucking hate it. I think the game is full of dog shit and, uh, and you should never play the game. And Bungie's a bunch of pampered, spoiled little rich kids that make video games. And keep in mind, he only played vanilla Destiny 2, so he's basing his opinion off of that. But also, he has no friends, so he can't really play Destiny 2 properly. Yeah. Also, I had to he look... He plays Destiny 2. He's, he says it's his guilty pleasure. Yeah, but he fucking... He, but DSP hates it, so we all have to hate it. No, that's not how this works. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, I had to look up the, the, uh, the story here, because the way he butchers this, or maybe I should let him cook. The way he butchers Critical. this is so bad. A lot yeah. of people have fallen off of this game. It still does have a pretty big community that follows it, though. All right? And... Are you supposed to go ago, off the cliff with them? We were doing this presentation over the internet um, on stage. They were on a stage presenting new content and stuff like that. And while they were doing this, I guess they were actually running Destiny 2, you know, the client on PC, on stage. And so some people found out that you could troll them by sending them like Steam invites or something like that. Like I guess they hadn't turned off the pop-ups for this. 
And they started sending them Steam invites with racist stuff, like the N-word and stuff like that. Okay? So, literally, they're trying to do a professional presentation about their upcoming content in Destiny 2, and they've got N-word messages popping up behind them. Because people are evil, Phil. Fuck. Yeah. It's kind of like what they did with you on the on Street Fighter 6 beta. Yeah, and then you were, like, crying and stuff. So, here's the story. Black screen. Here's a story from PC Gamer. Sorry, because, you know, we're... we're we're, we're gaming journalists here. We actually do the research, not like DSP here. Some people are going to say from last week, you guys say that you're, you're streamers. We're that too, but we're also gaming journalists. So keep that in mind. We're ranking up in the ranks. DSP's none of these shit. The hateful messages were sent after a Steam ID was accidentally revealed during the first into during the first intro into, into the sh light showcase. In a wake of a depressing burst of toxic abuse aimed at one of its developers during Destiny 2, Destiny 2's live stream, Bungie says it was issued permanent bans against several of the people involved and is taking steps to ensure it doesn't happen again. Yeah. The trouble began during a Destiny 2 Into the Light live stream where developers associate activity designer Noah Lee was demoing gameplay from the Onslaught Horde mode. Ooh, that sounds fun. Which is being added. See, you know what the problem with Destiny is? All this stuff is is sounds good. Here's the problem. Too expensive. There's too many expansion nope. packs and it's too expensive. But you have to be committed. It's like um Right. I don't know, like say a WWE's champion mobile phone game, you know, you you gotta be fully invested in it. Right. Which is out April 9th. Exposing the, the Steam menu very briefly, but long enough for viewers to see the profile name being used. It didn't take long for hateful racist messages to start coming in in the form of Steam friend requests and accounts whose name has been changed to abusive messages. Yeah. So here's, I think this is a few of these. I got fired from hospice because my boss confused me with the person shift I was covering. I thought... I fought him as hard as I could, but he wouldn't budge. Cut cut to five months later. My now ex-boss calls me. What did you do? So finally I figured it out. Took you long enough. You're done. I doubt what? I have no idea what the... Oh, it's a sponsored link. Okay. Lots of sponsored... It was so random. I thought it was part of the thing. Yeah, no. It was disappointing to see the notification, but we already know from a few awful individuals now reflective of the community at large. Bungie wrote via its social media team accounts on Reddit following the incident. We were able to track down the accounts of several individuals who sent the harmful notifications, and we have banned them from Destiny 2. Well, yeah. I can make another account. Well, I don't, I think. And that comes I, on the heels after um, Apex got hacked. Oh man, don't go! I, I I I went down that rabbit hole with uh, pirate software and all that stuff. How they're still trying to figure out. EA did issue a um, a statement on that, and they said they are working yeah. on it, all that stuff from client side and you know levels and stuff. But the way it was hacked, and it was a very interesting hack. You you couldn't tell if the computer was compromised or was it from the server. The way it was hacked, you just you you just didn't know if it if it was affected or not. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you you probably know more about this, dude. This is your wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's that's very interesting. We'd love to go over that one day, but it, it's it's fascinating. Uh, Pirate Software has a uh, two hour v stream video that he put up. That if you wanted to go through it, it's very good. Oh, well, I... basically, you know the 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 um, spy software that they put on it to stop people from cheating and hacking. Yes, as 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 a vulnerable thing, so that's how the hackers got in. Oh, that was it. They used the spy software that's supposed to stop cheating and hacking to hack the person's computer. To the point where the, the one player literally throws his hands in the air and goes, I'm not doing this. It's not me. Interesting. Oh, yeah. And they don't even realize that it's happening. Okay. 
So obviously this made headlines. People were like, you know, Bungie doesn't know what the hell they're doing. I can't believe that they would have this on, on, on their stream or whatever. You know, thousands of people tuning in and they've got racist stuff all over the stream. So in an unprecedented move, Bungie has permanently banned the players who sent them those harmful notifications. He makes it sound like they're, are they not supposed to ban them? No, Sony is very forward about permanently banning people that fuck up their business. Mm -hmm. They're not afraid to throw people in jail. To I don't think it was just Sony. I think it was just Bungie themselves are like, fuck, let's get them. Wait, did I say Sony or Bungie? It, they're, it's both. They're owned by Sony. They are now owned by Sony. X love or Xbox. Yeah. They, you know. Yeah. Yeah. They're not afraid to fucking pull, pull Nintendo on these fucking cheaters and shit like that. Yeah, it was just them trying to show, you know, people want to get their 10 minutes of glory by putting some racist bullshit on there. And then they're like, here you go, guys. <laughs> and they probably thought they'd get away with it because that's what they always think. And then they're like, they get banned. Uh, we'll see if it's their primary accounts because you think gave whoever they can call from Steam going like, who's this person? Oh, this person did this. Okay, here they are. Fuck them, you know? This person did this. Okay, here they are. Fuck them, you know. And it's not. It's probably not. Pretty sure they have a way to IP ban people. Yeah, IP and 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 what is it like BIOS ban or some something else? Mm -hmm. You you know sometimes you can oh, ban yeah, the, the console. Yeah, they get the yeah they get the MAC address so they can hard ban the console. Yeah, and you and you have to get a whole new computer and a whole new other thing to get you know. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they, you know, I mean, as stupid and immature it is, how did those people not realize that their names were going to be on those messages? I don't think they gave a fuck, Phil. Yeah. Do you think they would use their real names? No, of course not. Yeah. I don't think they thought they were going to get caught, Phil, because people are mean. Like, does he want them to be like called? Like, what do you want them to do? Like, be called horrible names and not be banned? Uh, Email him their driver's license so he can then dox them. God. Right. Also, this is just a story. Like, he made it sound like this was, like, big news. Mm -hmm. No, it's not big news. It, literally, the story is Bungie had a stream. A bunch of racist people came on. They, they did something stupid. The end. They banned them. Mm -hmm. Like the, the the it has a beginning, the middle, and the end. <laughs> mm -hmm. Case closed. Yeah, but he needs he needs to beef up his news stories. Oh, he can beef it up. Right? I mean, obviously their name was going to be attached to it, so they went and they banned a whole ton of people based off of the troll messages they sent during the live stream. And I just find it funny because in modern day, I mean, this trolling shit. Obviously, people just do it now to get away with it and do whatever they can. I mean, we got people running on stage at award shows that don't even belong there, right? Um, I'm because it's funny. Mm -hmm. Happy that they are taking action because at, at the very least, it sets. It already took action. It's already done. An example and a precedent. If this happens and they just let it go. It's a prison. Basically, people think, oh, and so Phil, they already banned them. Jesus Christ, Phil. <laughs> Sorry to be annoyed, but they already did this. Yeah, but he's butthurt. They literally put out a statement saying, we found them, we banned them. Mm -hmm. And remember, remember, guys, he just read a Twitter post. Mm -hmm. We don't know when the Twitter post came out, maybe before the story. Or after the story, but he only has 144 characters to read by. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Well, he doesn't even do that. He just reads the thumbnails. He doesn't even read He's the fucking. You don't even read the the link. You don't even read the link of it. He just reads that and yeah. go like, "All right, I'm gonna go on that." Don't, like, you don't even want to read the rest of it. No. Fuck off, Phil. It's okay to just keep doing. Yeah, it. he got the information. He got to, to make it up. Just keep doing it over and over. That's fine then. They don't want that message. They want people to know, no, this is serious. You shouldn't be fucking with, with this kind of stuff. You know, this is a, a stream to thousands of people who are very interested in the game. 
And the fact that you're deciding to act like this is not, you know, it's not right. It's not allowed. It's really messed up. So not allowed. I'm happy that they took action. I'm very happy that they've done something here to, you know, at least show, hey, don't do this. You're going to get banned. The but, feelings will be I mean, hurt. They'll be punished. God, I hate I him so him. much. I mean, even when he talked about Larry and he's like, oh, I should have fought him or sit down. It's a video game, Phil. He wanted him to sit down so he can strip him naked and go like, all right, off you go. Weird. Yeah, but he's it's weird. Like he, you know, he's still waiting for um, Twitch to apologize to him. Twitch ain't going to apologize to him. No. Twitch already it's kind of silly. That. They're supposed to be a top mm -hmm. AAA game dev. And they weren't smart enough to know that people could message them and do that on their professional stream to thousands of people all over the world about the future on content. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, man. I don't know about Bungie. I've been saying for years that they fell off. Halo was their best stuff. Destiny has not been good, and it just keeps getting worse. And I don't know. Phil, you haven't played Destiny 2 since it launched. That is all. Mm-hmm. I mean, for one to understand, a lot of the people from back then already left the company. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> that, the people who were left at Bungie are, is a shell of what they used to be. I'm not surprised to hear that. Are they? Um, I mean, following along that same line, our next story regards Bethesda, okay? And this story oh, here we go. is in regards to Starfield. Wait till you hear this one. I'm Starfield, gonna nothing but so just for the record, Starfield. Uh, this is from a Games Radar story that was published two days ago. I hate this story. Word for word now. Away. Okay, are you ready for this one? Get ready for this one. Are you ready for this, one? Ready for this one? Get ready no, for this one. Not ready. I'm not ready for this one. This is also. Do you get? Do you get all your information from PC Gamer, Phil? Mm-hmm. Starfield IGN. says that the RPG's ending twist was a panic button idea to tie things together because the team was overbooked making everything else. What the f what? That's not what it reads huh? here. Starfield Lee's quest designer had absolutely no time and had to hit the panic button so the game would have a satisfying final quest. Yeah. And then he makes this face. Mm -hmm. I came very you gotta... Oh, you go. Keep in mind. These article writers, these journals, are writing, writing in this style negatively to get more clicks. Bingo. So we already covered this. It was sweet baby. End of story. I mean, Moving on. right. It became very clear that we were missing the fine, the large final location that was going to tie the story together. Says former lead quest designer Will Shen. Starfield may have over a thousand planets, but the ending of the game, game's main quest, mild spoilers incoming, involves just a single one of Medusa's three first. There's a big space battle while orbiting the planet. Then you have to fight your way through dozens of enemies on the surface and undergo. It, doesn't the game, after you beat it, open up and get better? That's what I, I keep hearing never played it. by multiple yeah. people. So why the fuck does it matter what the ending is if you're going to keep playing it after it gets better? And and here's the thing. Bethesda stories and Bethesda main stories aren't that good. It's all about the side content with Bethesda games. Right? Right. Skyrim, Fallout, and other Fallouts. Like, their side contents are pretty much more important than the, the main story. When I hear... Right. So the creation of the very the, of this lengthy final quest was all very last minute, according to the former Starfield lead quest designer Will Chen, and only came together out of necessity and urgency. Well, that sounds terrible. At the game developer conference in San Francisco, where Brock Purdy plays. Oh wait, what? <laughs> where oh, how did we end up with Brock Purdy? We always because that's where you put, you know, San Francisco 49ers. Mm -hmm. 
On Tuesday, Shin and former Fallout 76 lead level designer Daryl Bringer gave a joint talk about the importance of collaboration when it comes to the level of quest design. The two developers worked together for nearly 15 years on Bethesda RPGs like Skyrim, Fallout 4, Fallout 76. Well, this is before they bought them. You really sucked ass. This is not even this is not even Microsoft's fault. This is a Bethesda fault. Fallout. Yeah, honestly, honestly, uh, uh, Starfall is a Bethesda issue. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Starfield, but yeah. Uh, both both have since left the left the company. Shen is now lead content designer for something Wicked Games. What the hell is that? Is that a indie studio? Is that a big studio? Yeah, I don't know. Couldn't tell you. All right, Bringer is the world director of Soft Rain. Both new studios created by the industry veterans. Well, we'll see where that goes. During the talk, Shenbringer discussed the design of a couple of memorable quests from Skyrim and Fallout 4, like House of Horrors, Woo! where the players investigate a haunted house in the last voyage of the USS Constitution, where the robots enlist the players to, re to return to an 18th century naval frigate to the sea near the end of the talk. Shen spoke about the final quest of the Starfield, especially what was lacking. So this guy's just passionate about his position about creating uh, stories and all that stuff, but it does seem some seems wrong at Bethesda if the ending was a little rushed or any of that stuff, or maybe the game took too long and their pipeline of making something wasn't wasn't flushed out. Mm. Not 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 because the DSP knows zero about game development or game design. You know, normally you start off with the you know with the uh a game in mind like the mechanic you start off with the mechanic you make a game around everything else you know let's say i wanted to make a, a shooter i i you make the shooter and then you you make everything else around it mm -hmm. so they probably you know probably the story was last because they probably was working on building the big world and all that stuff. And also it's a Bethesda game. Who gives a fuck? And he's over here looking looking constipated as hell, going like what it's like, why are you you you're the one that said Starfield was gonna be more remembered than uh Boulder's Gate. Games Boulder's take a while. Game, yeah. yeah. Games take a while, Phil. Uh, how quickly he's able to you know, turn on that one. Indeed. In loyalty. But let them butcher it. Let them, let them, like, whatever. <laughs> Silence. Uh, the clicking, sorry, folks. That's Hold me on, playing. Um, <laughs> so you're telling me Hawk. that the brand new IP from Bethesda that was supposed to be the new flagship title that everyone was going to care about and love, right? This is going to be the new. People do care about and love. You don't. Mm-hmm. Spell the scrolls. This is gonna be the new Fallout. Okay. <laughs> it's a good one of those, but there's a lot of games, Phil. It's not like Skyrim where it could just be it could be the bell of the ball for like eight years. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they didn't write the fucking ending. They literally were making the game and just flying by the seat of their pants. And that's not how game development works. Probably left it open for a DLC. <laughs> right. Yeah, wasn't Make there the supposed to be money. DLC coming out for the game? Very soon. But yes. Didn't know how it was going to end. I mean, new Star Wars trilogy much? Oh, God. You go. You go. Thank God we have, we have a Sith Lord in our, in our midst. Yeah. What, what the hell is he going on about? He's talking about Star Wars. Yeah, what, what? Is, what do you mean by Star Wars trilogy? I think he's because, talking about the. He he thinks that Star Wars trilogy sucks. His people on Twitter says it sucks, and he's is he, is he talking about when I hear what Star Wars sucks? Is he talking about the episode one to three, or are you talking about the new one? Yeah, new one. Yeah, is it one to three, four to five? I mean, four to six. Now, if, if you go back nine. on the, if you go back on the um video a little bit, he'll tell you new trilogy if you if you, if you in my mind 
this is my mind when I hear the Star Wars trilogy of what, like one to three. Yeah. <laughs> this is before they were bought by Disney. <laughs> yeah. You know, what was it? Pick a lane, Phil. And now, yeah, so seven, eight, nine sucked. So, but we have one through the three and four through the six. I mean, so fuck you, Phil. I mean, New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and the Return of the Jedi are very strong uh, films. Yeah. And some people go, like, if Return of the Jedi wasn't that great, I'm like, I'll fight you. That's my favorite one. I'll fight you. But look, I love Return of the Jedi. Return, it's one through the six. It's the life. It's the life and end of Anakin Skywalker. It's as simple as that. Right. Let's we'll, we'll just call it the Anakin arc or something. Yeah, Anakin. that's what it is. It's the Anakin arc. You know, seven, eight, nine. It's as far as I'm concerned, it's fan fiction. <laughs> uh, what was it? Basically. Don't even get me started on Solo. Right? What was it? I, I had a rant with um, Raven about that. Yeah. <laughs> What was it? How Han Solo got his name? You know, it's like freaking hell. Which is ridiculous. <laughs> You're like, what? Yeah. I, really? What? This is bullshit. Rogue One was pretty good. Yeah, that Rogue One was good because, yeah, it had a storyline to base it off. But Han Solo was just like, well, what was it? We know his name's Han Solo, and we know he did the Kelsey run in 12 parsecs. Let's build a whole entire story. It's like Madam Webb. Hey, what was it? You know how Britney Spears made a song called Toxic? Let's build a movie around that. Right. How stupid can you be to have your flagship title that's supposed to bring your company back to prominence? Also, this is at a game development conference that they were talking about game development stories and, you know, to make their games better from other people of the industry. Yeah, but... What was it? Why is it, it their flagship to bring it back to prominence? They they got a thing called Fallout. Yeah, the last one was a piece of crap, right? But apparently they're going to be um, redeemed in the TV series. So fuck you, Phil. Also, in all in all seriousness, Starfield sold very well, and it didn't get a lot of backlash. It did what it needed to do. Yeah, and exactly. not a lot of bugs either. Yeah, right. Not a lot of bugs. It, it it seemed well polished. You know, a lot a lot of people do like that game a lot. I'm not one of them, but there are people out there that like that game a lot. Yeah, it wasn't my cup of tea, but hey, it was an audience for it. Yeah. After very under well received games like Fallout 76 or Fallout 4, and the fact that you haven't had an Elder Scrolls in over a decade, right? Fallout 4 was make- good. Fallout 4, I liked a lot. Yeah. Not as like, much as 3, but I liked it. I liked it a lot, but yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, a high 7, uh, lower 8, if you want to say like that. You know, 4 stars around there. You know, but does it, it doesn't have to be knock your soft. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a very pretty girl that you want to marry, but it's not like some of these games are like hot. You know, like I played like 4 days of Fallout 4, so I really love that game. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> how do you not have an ending don't even make the game until you have a complete story you know it's in space right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and y- y- you know they did not have the best um, game development cycle it's, it's Bethesda yeah. I- I'm just saying and develop in Bethesda Bethesda, like I said, does not have the best stories in games. And also, when they make Starfield 2, the game's probably going to sell very well. Yeah. Exactly. Hurry, but the right? DLC might even redeem it, so. Like, this game wasn't offensive. It didn't die. It didn't, you know, choke in its own vomit. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of other games. It just came, went. That's fine. Yeah. Write the story. Finish the story. Then make the game. Don't fucking write the story as you're making the game. I think Meerkat said it's like this dude speaks in platitudes. He never gives uh, suggestions or how to fix things or do anything. It's just game broken. You guys made shitty story. Make better story. 
Uh, okay, so by Phil's logic, they should write the game, finish the game, right? So if he plays the game, he should finish the game. Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> exactly. Oh, sorry. I think I got something caught in my throat. It was called bullshit. <laughs> it's definitely bullshit. He's bullshit. Sorry about that, chat. If I blasted your ears, I'm, I'm, I humbly apologize. It's okay. He's an idiot. Mm-hmm. And then fuck up the ending. Now, spoiler alert, because obviously an article like this has to cover the ending. So if you have not beaten... No, no, no. No. What are you doing with your ear, Phil? And also, he's just talking about... He's just talking about his time with Starfield at GDC, and he makes it sound like he's like blasting it to everyone else. He's talking to his colleagues. Mm-hmm. To other game developers. Like, hey... The last the last mission was kind of rushed, and I feel like the last mission of a lot of games are kind of rushed. Remember Mass Effect Two? Mm-hmm. Okay, no, no, Mass Effect Two had. Oh no, Mass Effect Three. I was about to I was about to reach around this reach to the screen and give you a good one a good punch. All right, <laughs> sorry, wrong game. Mass Effect Two finished very nicely. Mass Effect Three finished with a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. The, to the point that uh well to the point that BioWare had to do some update or something and everyone hated it. Yeah, they had to do, redo the ending and it was a little better but it wasn't what people wanted. Right. <laughs> like pitchforks and torches for the end of of Mass Effect 3, not 2, sorry. Mm-hmm. Beat Starfield or watch someone beat Starfield and you wish to be like surprised at it, I don't recommend that you listen to the rest of what I'm gonna tell you. Phil Phil, the game's been out forever. It's been out for like six months. Well that was the wonder you finished that one. Uh, yeah, is uh like seriously. But just listen to this, okay? Speaking at the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco recently. Speaking of the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco, Brock Purdy. As part of a larger talk reflecting on the Bethesda's latest lengthy dev cycle, Starfield lead quest designer Will Shen, who since left. Slower. Slower, please. We need to hear every are we syllable. We are at normal speed. Oh, okay. He, he's he's mush mouthing through this. And he drank. Um, told him. Bethesda said the ending was conceived out of necessity and urgency. Crook. After the entire that. game reached a playable state and the lead developers noticed that it was lacking something. We were finally at a state uh-huh. in the project where we could play through the whole game. And it became very clear that we were missing the large final location that was going to tie the story together and have a satisfying action-filled payoff, Shen said. I was both implementing the main quest and leading the quest design team, so I had absolutely no time. The entire quest design team was already overbooked. If you're wondering exactly how an operation as comp- Where the fuck does it say overbooked? I'm gonna look at this. Give me a second. There it is. We're both implementing the main quest and leading the quest design team, so I had absolutely no time to the entire quest design team was already overbooked. Part of the issue, Chen said, was the sheer size of the team working on Starfield. So, yeah, the game was huge with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you have a scale of that size, yeah, it's a lot of people you have to go through, right? Mm-hmm. The development team was around 100. Skyrim's development team was around 100 people, which made collaboration between different departments easier. Yeah, that was a smaller. Probably that game was worked on for, what, six years? A long time with a very close-knit group of people. Don't forget COVID. So it slows everything down. Right, which made collaboration. And those people are probably veterans and all that stuff. That team size grew about 150 for Fallout 4. Then over, holy shit, 350 for Fallout 76. And they're getting worse. And 500 plus for Starfield. That's not, that's not Bethesda Game Studios, but outside developers like, mach, like Machine Games. Uh, nobody studios arcane snowed in. I'm not snowed in. It's it's getting warm outside. How dare you? In Forge Interactive, according to Shenbringer, the sheer number of people working on a game across different studios can cause problems. Yeah, you have to go to this department. 
it's more difficult than ever to know who does what and who's supposed to report to. So, like I listen to Pirate Software, that's a management issue. That's a management issue, guys. Like you shouldn't your management team should know what department's doing what and what who's doing who, you know. Yeah, that that's an issue of a big team like that. Even right. even smaller teams like 50 to 100 people have these issues. You just need good leadership to right, keep everyone in check. That's their job. Right. That's a and they needed to relay back to him. So they did a bad job relaying back to. So he had to go like, oh, uh, I guess I'll do this. Because, you know, you're on a tight deadline of September when this game launches or whatever it is, you know. And they're working on big ass planets that have nothing in it, you know. So the scope was too big for Starfield. Maybe they'll cut down the scope. Of Starfield, Starfield Two, and not have a hundred planets of nothing. Maybe they'll have like eighty planets of something, you know, or yeah, thousands or, of planets, or fifty planets of something instead of hundred, or thousands or whatever it is. Is like, look how many planets there are. There's nothing there. <laughs> you right. Star well, if you didn't like it, that's fine. But the way he makes it sound like he's like, well, these teams are bad and everyone's overbooked and he's gonna say some dumb shit. We're gaming journalists. Yeah, yeah. We 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 we're we're certified. Complex and sophisticated as Bethesda State Bethesda Game Studios could essentially <laughs> forget <laughs> to add a proper ending until the last minute. Well, according to Shen and former Fallout 76 lead level designer Daryl Bringer, who's also no longer at Bethesda. The sheer size of the 500 strong development team is partly to blame. He skipped the part where the the scale of Skyrim was 100 and then Fallout 4 was 150 and then, you know, Fallout 76 was 350, you know. It, it it's a scale issue and a management issue. It's a management yeah, issue. Yeah, but why should you let truth get in the way of a good story? Oh damn right. It's more difficult than ever to know who does what. Or who you're supposed to be reporting to, Bringer said, with Shen adding that a large, spread-out team can sometimes lead to a silo effect in which every department is scrambling for resources and saying no to collaboration requests. According to Shen, this had the inadvertent consequence of favoring the department over the game itself. Every request now has to go through all of these producers because we need to check all the contingent work, Shen says. Asking for something as simple as a chair just wasn't even so simple. Do you need animations for that chair? Do you need sound effects for it? How much does it cost? And that, will it add to the schedule? Can it Can it not? That's a management issue. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, th this is all management right here. Yeah. They're crunching the numbers. I'm like, okay, what is this going to cost us? Do we need, how much we need to pay the man, uh, animation team? Or do we even mm -hmm. need to get the animation team? What about the, um, I, I forgot the other shit. But yeah, this is all. This is one. This is all part of game development. Two. This is bad management. Right. It doesn't matter if it's game development or you work in a fucking restaurant. It's still bad management. It's a management issue. Fit because one of those teams just doesn't even have time to make it. Ultimately, Shen went to Starfield lead level designer Steve Cornett as a panic button. Steve Cornett. The only the only Cornett I know is Jim. And Cornette came up with the idea that players would hop dimensions and revisit locations instead of Bethesda designing whole new locations for the finale. It's an efficient use of the game's world. Probably because the game was uh, falling behind and they needed to get it out by Christmas of that year, you know? Yeah. They couldn't delay it and Papa Microsoft said, no, you need to get this shit out. Right. And a memorably offbeat spin on Bethesda's usual formula, even if it does arguably leave those few story threads hanging, but I guess that's dimension hopping for I believe that Dragon's Dogma is 50 times better, but also that that game and that engine underwhelms it. But it, like everything in gaming, Drax, just like everything, when a game comes out terrible in about, what, two months, three months, by July, by June... It's all going to be ironed out and people are like, oh, my God, Dragon's Dogma is so much better now. Mm -hmm. They'll get their they'll get their analytics data and 
you know, from Xboxes and Playstations and PCs, how to there'll be better NVIDIA drivers and AMD drivers and all that stuff. It's, you know, circle of life for you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> By that time, Jeff Keighley's got his new um, E3 up and running. So essentially, we'll what is this saying? It. It's very simple. It's a management issue. Right. Bethesda has gotten too popular and grew too big and literally became a bloated monster. What? Why does he always like using the word bloated? Is that, is, because he is that is the bloated. word of the month calendar? It's a bloated monster. He's bloated. He's a bloated monster. And his wife, too. <laughs> yeah. Tears of the fall, uh, Tears of the Kingdom, bloated. What was it? This movie that was bloated. bloated. DSP's bloated. Longer made games, yeah. which explains why their last three games sucked. The last game, the last three games didn't suck, and you didn't play them. Fallout seventy six, they 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 got that game around. It it sucked when it came out, but it, it, he goes on like the first impression is like if it sucked, then it sucks forever. And I'm like no, yeah, th th this is old um, journal mentality. Like okay, the review's out, it sucks, whatever. Yeah, but that's the One thing. That's not forever. journalist re, um, thing. You, you have to back up your claim. You can't just say, oh, it sucks. Why does it suck? Oh, well, it just sucked. Never does. He's like, oh, but this is a big bloated monster. And it, like they scaled up too high. I bet you if you revisit the game now, uh, Starfield, it's a lot different than what it is when it launched. Yeah, but he loves Starfield. But here's, but it's he, only because he played Baldur's Gate. You know what's crazy? Starfield just got a patch out. Like they've been they've been putting FSR stuff in it. They've been actually they've been updating FSR like aggressively DLSS in it. Like they've been aggressively adding uh you know, shaders and shit like that. Did they add a mini map in the in the home worlds? I don't know. They should have. They should. Maybe there's a hack mod or something, but they've been working on that game, man. They've been working on it. With FSR and all that stuff, who knows? Right? Literally. Right? That's a hundred percent exactly what they are what they're saying here. Okay? Okay. Okay. It's sad but true. Sometimes you grow too big for your own good. And many companies, this happens. And sometimes Usually, you don't at all. It's like a food company. Like I think of, of like oh god, here we like go, Starbucks. Oh god, Subway. Where eat they get fresh, so big. They overexpand. Their business model becomes unmanageable. The quality goes down, and now the whole business tanks. And this has actually happened both with Starbucks and with Subway. With no Starbucks, people want Subway. They, they did expand too much. It was like three on every block at one point. It seemed like. Here, in a, here where I live, there was like three literally in walking distance from each other. It was nuts. Yeah, and the problem with Subway, they just like being stingy on every little thing. And that's the issues with... That was the main issue with Subway. If you walk into a Subway right now and order olives on your sandwich, they would only give you eight olives. Right. Also, I don't need to go to Subway. I live very close to a very fantastic new sub shop. I'll s well, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but they make great subs and sandwiches. So fuck you. And next to it's Wawa. So fuck you. With Bethesda, <clears throat> they made so many good games. You know, they made three or four great Elder Scrolls games. <clears throat> Fallout 3 was a huge success. They even let another company make a spinoff in New Vegas. That was a huge success. And they let it get... You know, success, Phil, just like anyone else, people want to keep making success things. They don't want to keep failing. Well, yeah. Unlike, unlike some people we know. Like, they made, you know, like, Skyrim, Fallout 3, and all those games. People really like those games, but the bar is high. They need to clear it. They have a bar that they set the, well, this is Bethesda's own bar, but, you know, the bar's high. We have expectations that are 
not manageable. Starfield's one of them. Uh, Fallout 76. Like, every game they make. And there's a lot of people that love Bethesda. I, I don't, but I don't hate them. But Bethesda let me down a lot. That's all I could say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's, but it, it's like the abusive relationship analogy. Right. Yeah. But they didn't let me down because they didn't try. They let me down because they just they just who they are. Yeah. You, you know their games are going to be rough around the edges type of deal. Right. Yeah. But here we, you know, like he forgot Doom. He forgot. He forgot they rebooted Doom. They, they did that, you know, they bought it's software, you idiot. To their heads, and they just absolutely overexpanded. And because of that, you have 500 people working on a video game, and at every given moment, if you need something done, you've got to go through so many hoops. You've got to go through management off issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, Phil, you have 16,000 workers that want to tell you to go fuck yourself, but you don't listen to us. Management issue. Through so much paperwork, yeah, but so see, much he bullshit. Moves it. He just fixed to get up the basic. helicopter company, and then they fired him. Yeah, the problem with Starfield is that none of the content has any fill fulfillment. It's all just randomly generated stuff. In the like in Skyrim, they want to tell you to go kill a random. See, yeah, that's fine. Or in in Fallout, you go like, go do this thing. Or my favorite part of Fallout, believe it or not, is just wandering around go to what's what's how big the map is let's go over there let's go over here let's check out this weird town let's check out this other weird shit let's check out that and and scott and starfield it's like let's go to this planet it has nothing well <coughs> well that sucks go to this next planet this has nothing well this sucks like there's nothing cool in anything mm-hmm it's like if they did, like, I don't know, like, 20 planets with cool shit, that would be one thing. But they have 1,000 planets with no shit. Done, you just nothing gets done anymore, right? I mean, I tell you, yeah, they probably went into it, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> they probably totally went into it. I'm sorry, this bar at the top is pissing me off. It's so jarring. Oh, right, that right, thing. Right. Are, are you talking about the uh, tip goals and all that? Yeah, it's at the top, and then you have DSP, and it just clashes so hard. Yeah, there's no point of even having it if he's not going to even talk about tips and all that shit until the support section. Yeah, it, no, he's got to let the people know. Also, get hard. before people sit here, you don't need you don't need to say DSP, and it helps me. It helps me, so keep doing it because you're an idiot. You don't need to literally smack people over the head and go like, "This is the the new segment." Saying things, he always oh. forgets about it anyway. Yeah, but Bethesda doesn't have anything to do with Doom being. Gr That's true. That's its studios. That's true. You know, this will be our biggest game ever. It's biggest scope, biggest this, biggest that. Don't worry, we're good enough that we'll figure it out on the fly. We'll let this game evolve as we make it. You know, I'm sure you know about this story about G Million about Bioware where people were crying and all that stuff and literally losing their fucking minds over what game? Not not Anthem. There was another game. Was it Dragon Age Inquisition where they were like literally just hyperventilating? There were and three games that came out during the downfall. That was Inquisition, Anthem, and Andromeda. Right, it was Andromeda. But Inquisition came out good. But they... That was 2014. Uh, but there, there was a... I forget, what was the term? Uh, Bethe it was not Bethesda Magic. It was like Bioware Magic or something. Like they would, they would uh, panic. And I mean panic. Like these motherfuckers were going into like... They would go into like offices and scream and just... They were losing it. This team was losing it. <laughs> this <laughs> does not sound like a fun time at Bioware, I'll tell you that. You know, everyone's on edge just just hoping their game's good, you know? Couldn't imagine the pressure cooker you had to be on. Imagine, uh, you know, going back to your 
apartment building or whatever you do to work on this. And then you're like, honey, what, what, huh? got to work on, uh, in, you know, and then you're, you, and then you take a vacation after it's done. And then, you know, you go to the water park. You're like, Oh, thank God that game's good. Thank God everyone likes it. But the, the next two Andromeda and, uh, yeah, it wasn't an anthem did not have that same magic and the, the and morale in that in in that studio went down. It happens. No one wants to make bad products, Phil. Like <laughs> you think BioWare wanted to make Anthem bad? No. That was that was all management going like you should make it like this and this and then it failed. Mm-hmm. Right? That's not how you do a story. You just don't. When you have a story, you need to have a begittle, a begit, a begittle. Begittle? A begittle. A begittle? A begittle? He was thinking about oh. a McGriddle. All he right. Basically he was. McGriddle. Okay. He was McHungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a like, begittle. Like, I, I want this McGriddle right now, this sausage, egg, and cheese McGriddle. A begittle. Jeez. Begittle. You need a begittle. That's a good one. A beginning, a middle, and an end. And you need to then maybe work out some details in the Wow, really? They need to work out some details, eh? Wow. How'd you figure that out, kindergarten cop? Mm-hmm. While you're you're working you, on you it. You know what's funny? I'm pretty sure they had that on the storyboard, but they ran out of time. Right. So they had to work around it. It's a lot yeah, well, you know, apparently the, the they spent most of their time getting a begittle. Mm-hmm. Also, how many games have like deep, riching storylines? I mean, there's a few out there, but you know, like Super Mario, go go get the princess. Ninja Gaiden, go kill this thing. <laughs> Hell Divers, save the universe. Mm-hmm. Not every game needs to be deep, enriching storylines, Phil. <laughs> but you need to know the story. It's called an outline. I can't imagine anyone trying to do anything. Do we have any outline of where he's going or anything you do? No, he, no. He's, he's going off tangent. But didn't um, uh, Tears of the Kingdom have a storyline? Yeah, the princess yeah. is the princess is locked up somewhere. Go find her. And Link, is, Link goes on a lot of side yeah. missions. Yeah, but so uh, but by his thing, it was like, oh no, it can't that kind of storyline is too bloated narrative without actually having an outline of their 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 narrative outline is crazy to me and the fact that they're making how many millions of dollars in this game right the budget was huge for star oh, millions of huge. and they didn't have the story done millions of it just baffles me they didn't know how they were going to end it so <laughs> it's just like oh my didn't know how to end it ending. once you have your story set then Did, you can um, work on everything sopranos have an ending you know what happened? You know what happened? They had a story, Phil. He had a story. He had things that he wanted to do in a story. But he had to put it through management first and these people, the 500 people, to implement his ideas into it because it was a 500-man team. Kind of hard to get your story across when you have 500 people, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm just saying... Bro. Because apparently, um, even Ghost, uh, sorry, not Ghostbusters, but yeah, with Ghostbusters and, um, Sopranos did, didn't have an ending. Sopranos did, and that's why it's cuts to black. Oh, because Tony died. Yeah, at the end. Yeah. Right, there you go. Well, you know, it cut to black could... and all of a sudden because he was talking about something and it. And expand or you can retract you know you can yeah, you can do what you need to do yeah, to make it work in the constraints and the budget and the resources and the, the personnel and whatever you have the talent pool whatever but you have you the story or else you end up with the new star wars trilogy which is exactly what happened with that. what new star wars trilogy one or is he talking about the raid trilogy which one are you talking about he's talking about the raid trilogy the yeah. one you didn't see i'm so confused yeah. by this i'm so I'm like almost pissed yeah, I thought seven was pretty decent, but eight and eight. Seven's seven's like whatever. 
Seven was fan fiction. That was all of his like. Well, even if it was fan fiction, it, berries. Well, you know me. I'm like, it didn't offend me. Everything else did. Yeah, yeah. this one it, did. It was okay, but it wasn't. It wasn't thing. As far as I'm concerned, seven, eight, nine is just fan fiction. There's a lot of Star Wars out there. Yeah, you know, if yeah, it wasn't for Mandalorian, we probably would have went. Yeah, f you, Disney. That is true, and Mandalorian is very good. First installment mm -hmm. was absolutely amazing, right? The second no, installment floundered, and it felt like it was the what? Wait, the second installment? What? What first? Is, what? What is he talking about? I'm so. Confused. He's talking about um. What was it? The um. Wait. The rise of um a return of uh, the last Jedi. That was it. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just the way he said it was no. like. The first one is amazing. Is he's thinking about the... It's like, what? He, yeah, he's, he's saying The Force of Awakening was amazing. No, it wasn't. It was okay. Like I said, but it was full of memory berries. Because that's what... um. I don't know. I'm still... Judge I, Abrams does. If you ask me, <laughs> seven through nine doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Or whatever. Whatever. After Return of the Jedi, that doesn't exist. So in my mind, it's like when someone goes like, oh, the awful trilogy. Are you talking about one through three? Well, three wasn't that bad. And Clone Wars wasn't that bad. But you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. The end of the storyline. So why is there even a third movie? And then the third movie ends up being a bunch of bullshit right. because you don't need a trilogy anymore because you already ended your story in the second movie. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Because it made a shit ton of money. Yeah, that's what Disney makes it for. Right, but Bill, what was it? Like I said, hmm? I don't. I don't even know why he's talking about it. He did not go. He didn't go see the movies. Right, it made a shit ton yeah, of money. He, there you go. Yeah, yeah. He he has no he has no basis on it. Yeah, this is during the time where he became a shut in and just streamed all day. Right. So keep <laughs> that in mind, guys. Indeed. <clears throat> so, I mean, it's just awful. And how you didn't learn from stuff like that, you know? Like, as you're making this game, you see that happen. You see all... Phil, because you're so stuck in your own head, never worked with a management team or worked with anyone, really. This is what this is what happens. The 500-team dev team, they probably had to... Some people were in Korea. Some people were in Japan. Some people were probably in Redmond. Some people were probably in California. Some people were probably in New York. Some people were probably in Maryland. And it's... then COVID happened. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, it probably took a while for the dev team and, you know, all that stuff. And he's like, well, well, could they just couldn't make it better? Well, like, well, Phil, I don't know, eight year old. Tell you, tell me. All the, the, the critical panning of the end of the trilogy and you're like well we can't do that we have to do something better than that and then they just fucking do it it's like <laughs> it's unfucking believable like holy shit dude um yikes holy shit dude I, it, yikes. it's not hard to believe if you have 500 people working on a game and literally oh well we need a chair made well we got to contact this department and wait four days for a response then they got to contact the animations team the audio team this and that and we all got to work on this so indeed four months to get one chair we needed some squishing also what the fuck is with this shirt why does it have too many buttons because guess what that's not how you work shirt. together on anything like, i worked for a helicopter got it from the thrift oh god now to do anything at the helicopter company, obviously, I had to work with my management directly. I had to work with the shipping department in the back. I had to work and call outside facilities who repaired helicopter parts and work with them. But even then, like, I could usually get stuff done within a day or two. It's not anymore. No, you you're not. <laughs> no, you didn't. Because that's why they never gave you a laptop because you were behind your work. Indeed. Especially if it was like a rush job for someone who needed something for a helicopter. Which is a lot. A couple days, but I get it done. Four months for nope. a chair. Phil, I don't even believe you get anything done anymore. <laughs> maybe back then, maybe, but now I believe you get jack shit done. What have you got done? Nothing. Yeah, you mm. can't even get Yakuza done in two months. You get... Final you, Fantasy shelved. And, Dragon's Dogma shelved. And another thing, Phil? 
doing what you did at the helicopter company is not the same thing as coordinating a chair with an animation department, sound department, everything, because they have to go draw the chair. That takes a while. They have to record the sounds. That takes a while. That takes people and, and all that shit. It's a totally different field. He just doesn't understand how much work the people have to go through for yeah. fucking a simple task. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he doesn't do his own editing, remember? Yeah, he no, doesn't even edit. I don't edit either, but at least it's not that hard. He's just an idiot. No, it, you edited, sir. It's yeah. not hard for basic shit like for what I'm, phil needs it i'm for. good at clipping i'm not i'm not good at like putting something together yeah no phil, i've seen all your work needs to do is take out a lot of dead air a lot of dead stuff i i get what you i have to be motivated like if yeah. I, I could do it i could do it but yeah. it's like <laughs> i'm not i'm not what it says like herculean effort i have to have the idea you know i'm like i know what i want to make I know how I want it to end, and I want. I, and then sometimes in the process, you're like, I could add this. I'm going to remove this, and then it becomes a, a cake or whatever. But DSP don't yeah. know the process. He don't care about this shit. No. He he doesn't do anything. You know that's why he's throwback things uh, being ridiculed because they're stolen content. Also, what does he talk about these people? They they, they steal it, and then he just takes it and glory hounds it. Mm hmm. Air. Oh, look, you know what guys, I'm saying? popular. Yeah, he's real popular. He's a real idiot. Mm hmm Like, that doesn't work. Streaming is easier than editing, but here's the thing. A lot that I have to learn about Drax is timing. Like, he doesn't, he just bulks, puts it up on, on YouTube now. That's not, that's not going to cut it anymore. Phil, you can't just put up a fucking hour video. Like what what I put up a video. You saw it, right? Uh D Dog, the, the, the forty seconds I put up from the Splatfest talking about Phil and the NDA Fallout Four. Mm -hmm. Like keep it short, keep it stupid. Uh uh Pirate Software, same thing. People want little tiny people want little tiny little bites so they can when they're scrolling through the thing, they can hear it. Get it, get out to their next to next video, add on, or whatever, you know? Like, th that's what they want. They want that kind of shit, and you're over here going like, oh, I'm going to, you know, let's plays and all that stuff. Nah, nah. You want to know how things are going to do? Because I I'll tell you, this is how y DSP should, should do things. Well, me and G are doing it. You should have little or your editing team you used to have a person that used to give you little tidbits, but it was too long. You know, you would edit it and then send it and it would be too late. You need to be a little bit faster on the uptake. Yep. Like if you're going to put a video out or these things, you need like hundreds of these things out a day, not a day, but you need a library of small clips going out. Not even five to ten minutes, like sixty minutes. Get them in, get them out. Fifteen seconds if you can, you know. But DSP's stupid. He ain't gonna do that. He's just gonna like everyone wants things in, not portrait mode, but they, you know, if you're on a bus or you're or you have a minute or any of that stuff. People are flipping through YouTube and they'll watch like a clip or something. You want to catch people off guard. Like, yeah, there are people still going through YouTube, searching things and all that stuff. Yeah, but you're not being discovered. No one's looking up Starfield episode 400 or whatever the fuck it was. I mean, who the fuck is going to see Dragon's Dogma part three? No, if, if it was a good part or a thing that, that people like, they'll, they'll go to it. You know, but you they want it quick and easy. You know, they, they want it to right. be running down the battery of their phone. They don't want it to be... A never-ending story that you know what was it there's other things in my life i don't revolve it around dsp you know what was it i would have to play catch up on all the tv shows i'm watching i'm going to the movies again you know we're watching movies we're, we're you know we're doing the the filming 
uh, the the watch parties and what have you. We right be sitting there watching your crap. Right, we're we're already thinking about what's we're already thinking about what what we're doing next, and you're not exactly. Yeah, we're thinking ahead. He's not. Yeah, and obviously, it's just a a, a problem with these AAA game devs. They've gotten too big. They've gotten too convoluted. They don't even have like a set work path of how to get anything done. So everyone's just confused. And why don't you work on it and understand? Phil, it, it, pick a lane. What was it? It's either it's bloated. It's not enough content. It, it, it's it's too simple. It's it's not detailed enough. You know, it's what was right. it? Oh, it's got too much graphics. It's it's too jittery. It's a, yeah. It, there's no please in this guy. No, not at all. At all. And the game sucks. Well, Bethesda, it's time to fix that. Seriously, like, if this is the case, and if they're now working on the next Elder Scrolls, and they got 500 people working on the next Elder Scrolls, they gotta fucking stop. Really, they just have to stop with the bullshit. Enough with the Why? convoluted nonsense. And, I, you know, what I really gotta Why? ask is... Well, the game's over. Probably the turnaround rate for people, like, game's over. They probably had their pizza party, and then they left. Yes, Contract. Yeah, he's on the fence, but he never gave. But he never gave That's anything. There are people who make good content. Yeah, he never. He never gave anything to to Bethesda. Like if I hear, I hear that, and I go like, "Wow, Bethesda seems like they have a management issue." But I'm sure the people that are working there are the managers and all that stuff. They tried. They tried. Yeah, but is is he giving us a um a a a solution? No. no, you know it's like it's like uh, I'm going to bring up Elon again, right? When when he had the boring company, right? He's there going, "Oh, we're going to have the boring company. It's going to build a hyper train that's going to link these two cities together." And to the point where they asked him, um, "Okay, how's that done?" No, oh, that's not my job. That's the engineer's job. I'm just the ideas man, and that's what DSP is trying to be. The ideas man. You, you're not giving us any solution of how they're going to fix this. You're right. Saying I'll get it done. How? What is it going to be? More manpower? Is it? What was it? Do they have to get better training? Is the software have to be better? Or do we need faster machines to render all this? How are we going to do this, Phil? How? Exactly. How are we going to do this? And he he has no solution to just go dur do better. Yeah. Well, you know what I say to that? Shut the fuck up. Exactly. What happened to Todd Howard, right? Because if you actually look at Todd Howard, he's still there. He's done some in yes. <laughs> what happened to Todd Howard? <laughs> it's like, did he die? No, Todd Howard's still there. What the hell are you talking about? He was a lead designer. He's the one that literally says, "Do this, do that." He's the, he's the, he's, he's the, man. the, he's the man. The guy in the jacket. Yeah, he's the guy in the jacket. Also, can we also say the other thing? Maybe that guy wanted to do more stuff with Starfield, and maybe Todd Howard shot him down too. Mm -hmm. It is possible that some people's vision uh, grows to an astronomical size. Sometimes, Phil. Mm -hmm. Interviews and things. Over don't here. you think Phil Spencer be going to Todd Howard and go, dude? I want it on this time, and it needs to be on this budget. Starfield's a very expensive game talking about yeah. his history and he's like yeah so for the original elder, elder scrolls game we made we had this many people and then we were able to expand for also bethesda was a smaller company not publishing their own games and skyrim brought them a lot of money mm -hmm. yeah and guess what microsoft brought them a bunch of money too that's how they were able to expand that too yeah they bought them for like six billion dollars whoever they are and microsoft has what are they, a $3 trillion company in, in theory or something like that? They're like pretty that. much the, one of the biggest companies in the world. Apple and Microsoft, basically trillions of dollars. When I mean trillions, I mean with an S, not in a N. Yeah. For the next one, the next one. So he's the one manning the hell. <clears throat> Why is he? He is literally the Miyamoto of that place. I mean, you know, you got to have him. Yeah, but Running he's making shit. out that like Todd Howard's building the game. No, Todd Howard ain't building the game. Uh, into the shoals, right? What, like, what is this guy doing? 
I just managing a company. It just drives me nuts. You know what I'm saying? Phil's just mad. It's not good enough that he didn't make his money. Todd Howard, you didn't make on your belt. Todd Howard, your game wasn't good enough, and I made four dollars. Mm hmm. And it's not like he paid for the game either. He had nope. it on Game Pass. No, he paid thirty bucks for the upgrade to play it three days early. Okay, he made oh. then he made his money then. Yeah. And whose fault was that? And was it Mercedes already did the entire dog Dragon's Dogma campaign? I believe it. What's up, Bones? I just don't get it. Thanks for being a member. It's not what it used to be. You should know, oh man, Bethesda, hey. whatever they pump out is gonna be great. I can't wait for their next game. I don't even care what it is. Now it's like, oh Bethesda. And guess who's gonna play that next? Oh, Bethesda game and hype it up. It's gonna be Ah, oh, Phil. Ah, oh, Phil. Another run of the mill boring ass playthrough. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, Phil. It's going to take them forever to have a new game. And when it comes out, it's probably going to suck. It's going to be way underperforming. It's going to, you know. Yeah, just. Be good. Yeah, just like a DSP playthrough. It's going to suck and underperform. Mm hmm. Ah, a Phil Bethesda playthrough. Fuck. Is that what um, Kat says about Phil in the bedroom? Not nah, Kat. Cat has. And, and, and uh, underperformed? No, nah, Kat just. Cat has her fucking uh, headphones in, you know, her noise canceling so she doesn't hear it all day, every day. Oh, okay. You know, it's not going to live up to expectations. The ending, for the record, the ending of Starfield is atrociously bad. It was one of the worst contrived endings I've ever heard. I almost want to see what the fuck he said about the ending of Starfield. Like, uh, you know, current Phil and past Phil, but mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not looking up that fuck. That was a long time ago. Yeah, and, we've and moved on with our lives because basically it makes everything you've done in the game up to that point meaningless it's in essence if you don't play starfield you've had exactly the same experience. phil cannot phil just <laughs> indeed he i would like to squish dsp's like a like a grape but he's an idiot no dsp cannot keep up with modern streaming or modern anything he is an absolute relic and everything he does everything you know well drax only took him 16 years to fix the microphone Every, he's, a, he's got a list of things to do list right he is an absolute relic can you imagine I want you to imagine it, like what we're doing it would break his mind it would break it what you yeah, can but, oh you got even if I imagine that I'm doing way more work than DSP is right like we're problem solvers we solve problems we don't make problems like some people DSP makes problems and then we all solve them, and then he gets all mad when you solve the problem. Mm -hmm. He's an idiot. Experience as if you've played Starfield, and that's a bad thing. They're morons. You're a moron. You can tell that ending wasn't tested with anyone because it's a, such a bad ending. Of course it was tested with someone. It, it would have tested to make sure it worked. What was it? Why would they? What was it? They wouldn't have tested it to, like, every time they're going to hurry. Does he not know how spoilers happen? No, not at all. He has zero idea. Yeah. It makes you feel pissed off that you spent any time playing the game. It's a game, Phil. I would live. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Games that I can't remember right now had bad endings a lot. A lot, a lot. Yeah. And here he is. Bad good. endings. TV series have bad endi endings. Mm -hmm. Movies have bad endings. Every a lot of things have bad endings. Yeah. Life has a bad ending sometimes. Yeah. You die. There right. you go. Bad ending. So it just kills me that like they have this system and they had the they were the they man, they had the world in their hands. They still do. You know, at one point, and now they're just they're just giving it away. Here. Give all the Here. you know, Larian Here. surpasses them. C D Project Red did surpass them and then had a big floundering with Cyberpunk, but they're probably No 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 Cy okay. Cyberpunk did did release broken but they did work on it people really like it now they i don't want to say they get a pass but they did fall under that they did fall under it but they did rectify their problems this is what gaming is now a game comes out might not be what we live up to but they will they will get there mm -hmm. 
you know, Dragon's Dogma today is not that very good, but wait a little bit and it will it will get there. Probably when the first expansion comes out, it will get there. Probably going to get it back. If they come out with a good game now, where people are going to look to these other companies for their epic RPG experiences, and Bethesda's just going to be left in the dust. You know what I'm saying? No, they're owned by Microsoft. They'll be fine. On. There's one, one other big story to cover, all right? But and this one is in regards to a... All right, we're going to go to the... Yes, indeed. We're going to go on to the Aqua Teal version of that. Yeah. So we should ring the bell for their main event. I feel like I need like a musical interlude or something. Oh, we will have a musical interlude. Like a, I need like a, I'm going to use the uh, rare, I'm going to use rare, rare. Folks, honk, if you have to honk. go to the bathroom, this would be the good time to do it now. Yeah. If you got him. I'm going to use the rare, rare uh, Donkey Kong one. This one. Fuck himself. That there you go, guys. How's that? I'm gonna add that to the soundboard. <laughs> That's our main event song. We are here How at the this stupid video. Ten minutes. Okay, I think I got time. Oh, okay. Kotaku. Now, for those of you who don't know, Kotaku is a website that covers game news. Really? You don't say? Or do they? Because they did at one point, and then in the last couple of years... You know, TSP used to be a Let's Player that only streams games. That used to just play games and beat them, and then off to the next game. Taku has flipped to become flipped. an incredibly ridiculous leftist-leaning journalistic site that really politicizes things in gaming. That's like gaming. also literally says some of the dumbest takes ever in gaming just for clickbait. Like, the you know who says the dumbest takes in gaming? Yes, me. Yes. No one gives a fuck about what your opinions are. <laughs> no, seriously, no one gives a fuck. You'll have articles that are just so dumb that you know you're like, this is a joke. This is like the Onion writing this article, right? You're an this Onion of an article. You're a parody of a person. It's real. It's really on their site. They actually published it as a story. You know. Just they need to do something for clicks, Phil, ever. every day. And it, a lot of people will say, like, they'll, they'll try to make an issue out of something, and then literally everyone else on the planet will read the article and be like, that's not an issue. Why did they even publish this? It's a joke. So, You know what's funny? When he says that's not an issue, the one that I brought up was DoorDash was too expensive. <laughs> that's what DSB politics was going to be. You know, like, this dude, this dude, this dude. Just want to just point that out, guys. This dude. Fucking hell, Phil. Talking about issues. Oh, so, what's ended up happening is they went from being kind of a respected journalistic website to for over the last two years or so, just the running joke of the Internet. Like everyone says, oh, Kotaku again, Kotaku again. You know who's a running joke of the Internet? ESP. You damn right. Another fucking stupid, overly left-leaning article complaining about something, politicizing something. Sounds like someone we know. And you just know when you read their shit, it's exactly what it is. It's like a turd on a web page. Like, there's no... Re well, every time I click on a DSP video, it's like a turd uh, as a video. <laughs> just awful. Reason to ever go there, okay? So what ended up happening is... They tanked this last two years. All of their attention has gone away and everyone's just constantly making fun of them. So all their traffic on their site has tanked. They're not making as much money as they used to on ad revenue and things like that, which they because everyone moved on to YouTube and other other content creators. No one really reads uh, web pages anymore. If, like, do, do people really surf the web like they did years ago? and read it's very bite-sized if you think about it d-dog wouldn't you think i think so but that's why they 
you know, you had all those bud feed, buzz feeds like, what was it? Ten things that looked like a cat, or what was it? How games uh, thing? It's you know, basically, it's literally Mojo Jojo Gont. Uh, not Mojo Jojo. Sorry, I saw that because Mojo typed something in chat. Hi, Mojo. Yeah, it's a turd that just won't flush. Um, what was it? Uh, what's that um, streaming company? Wait, Mojo company? content. Oh no no. Yeah, the one that's... Oh, you're talking about Watch Mojo. Watch Mojo. There we go. That's the one. Yeah, it's 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 pretty much all that nowadays. Right. Very bite sized Very get in, get out. I mean, you know. Yeah. Twitter and all that stuff like no no one wants this I'm, I'm sure there's some people like I'll read you know articles and stuff but they're, they'll link to an article it's very just like just like Kotaku they there people don't want to read their shit because they have an agenda and a lot of it's stupid and they're like well that's stupid but they have to do it because they need clicks to you know for their that's site how they get the revenue yeah because they need the advertising dollars that's how they get paid you know, apparently, you know, they all can't use somebody shilling, um, uh, what's we call a crowdfunding um, basis for to run all their businesses. Right, right. And he's and he's over here going like, oh, Kutaku, like, yeah. I mean, I used to go to GameSpot every every other day to see what articles that or the things that paid up. You know, not anymore. Yeah, I, I watch trailers and I put it in my calendar so I know when the movies and TV shows are coming out and games and stuff. Right. But I don't have a schedule of like, hey guys, we're gonna go through the schedule now. Come on, guys. I think people great. I think people consume media by audio and video more now than ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's all about the whole um audio vi video now. Like people wouldn't have their internet in the background while they're doing something else. Exactly. And to be fair, or not fair, uh, writing articles and editing it and all that stuff is way harder. Yeah. Scripting and all the rest of it is a thing. That's why the TV shows got rid of the um, thing that, remember, there was like a whole lot of reality TV shows and hardly any actual content shows. But people gave up on that stuff because they found it boring. Like, I mean, am I saying that the internet is still not full of words and you can read articles and things and all that stuff oh there's plenty out there oh mm. oh plenty plenty mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> but not like it used to be what when the i when when desktops ruled the world and people like desktops still rule the world but you know what i mean they need to survive so here's what happened okay the the management meaning the people who own kotaku mm -hmm. came down on them this week and said what you're doing isn't working everyone hates you you've got to now become <laughs> what you're doing isn't working everyone hates you yep I, like I used to like that when I worked now. at a, um what's we call it when I worked at retail you know they used to fire us up by saying what you're doing is not working and everybody hates you all right go up there and sell some products also, can I? I've been saying the same thing to DSP. <laughs> what you're doing ain't working, and everyone hates you. But literally, everyone hates you. But I don't think everyone hates Kutaku. It's just the the people that. So that's your fault. <laughs> that's why the, Kotaku is getting the. It's all your fault, Raven. You started this. I started this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't. Like Kotaku, I don't want to say like everyone hates them because they're still around, but so are you. So there you go, Phil. Idiot. I'm a gaming website again. So starting this week, you have to pump out 50 game guides. Yes, they actually. Made you looked that up. You looked that up and I found it too. That they wanted to move away from uh, the woke articles to game guides. Yeah. Or whatever. And it's like, that's impossible. No matter who you are. 
you know, a game guide could be anything. But if if DSP had to do a game guide, um, hype game up, buy game, play game, hate game, uninstall game, blame viewers. So yeah, this game guide. Kutaku is the AV Club Gizmondo. Okay. Wow, Gizmondo really change and it's pronounced Gizmodo. Wow, yeah. Oh, it's Gizmodo. Sorry. I was thinking about a yeah, failed no, okay. I was thinking about a failed uh handheld. Uh some car culture site. The hell is quartz. Uh, some bullshit. A lot of their sites look the same. Yeah, but like I said, you have to, the news nowadays, especially in the gaming industry, has to be in a nanosecond. It has to be a thing. And like, what was it? Like I said with that, um, the story about the baseball player. Because they're getting the information out quick as thing because they're going to beat the other people to do it. It's not being fact-checked. So... That's why they're playing it safe by saying, well, we're going to do guides now because it, it the the reporting has to be quick and precise or else, you know, you get sued for slander and all the rest of it. And that's why some companies have gone belly up. G4's gone. Now Rooster Teeth's gone. You know, it's, it, it's, you know, it was a, it was a DSP so-called news. His news is like a day late. This is stuff that we already know. We actually know the facts to the point where his chat has to correct him all the time because he's getting the facts wrong. Yeah, the, but that's what happens when he just goes by Twitter. Mm-hmm. But and just also, the, the headlines. And also, newsman, DSP, you're supposed to check this stuff, read it, understand it, and then do that. You're over here being like, oh, my God, uh, Kutaku. And it's like, yeah. They're in a media place, you know, digital. Well, I was going to say magazine. They're not a magazine, but like in the same thing, like people are not reading it. They'll rather people would rather watch a edited TikTok or an edited video or edit something that gets what they want quick, mm -hmm. quick. Yeah, I'd rather watch a three minute video than a fucking read a fucking mm -hmm. hundred word article. Right an edict you have to make 50 game guides in one week and have those on your site to drive traffic to the site that's related to a lot of times i just if i have a problem all i have to do is type in youtube and someone has the problem solved mm -hmm. easy to actual games because what you're doing isn't working so, it's hang not on. gaming related you post trash and we need absolutely all right so he's saying there's the 50 game guides have to be on the website Right mm -hmm. for a week. Okay, so, but the way he made it out, it was like each individual reporter had to do fifty game guides. Mm -hmm. But it's not fifty. Uh, you know, each individual reporter doing fifty game guides because that'd be another thing. If there was like more than say even twenty game guides, are you going to go to a website? It's got just um, heaps and heaps of stuff. It's like heaps and heaps of game guides. It's like, dude, no. That's why we have a thing called a search engine. Right. Yeah. You know, and also, 50 um, game guides a week. There's not even been coming out 50. What was it? How many games did we get from February? We got... Um, not 50. Uh, what was it? The Final Fantasy VII, uh, the Suicide Squad, um... Yeah, it was. I, I can barely remember fifty games. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, it's arbitrary. They're they're just saying it's a guideline, Phil. It's not fact. It's not law. It's not. Also, you know, it, it's not religion. Also, looking over Kutaku, the the website. I I know it's not on the screen, but I'm not gonna show Kutaku. Like, I'm not gonna do that. Fuck them. You know. That are they it, paying you? No, they're not paying me, so they can go fuck they're, themselves. They're in yeah. Why so, it's a lot of it's a lot of news 
jargon bullshit like Final Fantasy DLC gets a release date or Final Fantasy 16. It's like how to steal the Turnberry crown in Final Fantasy Rebirth. FF7 Rebirth, best material for buffing your party. Like, the fuck is this website? Convoluta as hell. And then you have reviews and shit, like Rising of Ronin got a review. Dragon's Dogma got a review. See, they, they even beat Dragon's Dogma before you. Mm-hmm. Skull and but Bones. Called, but the other stuff is called filler. Oh, it's very much it's like, filler. You know, like when you're watching a TV series and, you know, the, 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 the got like a plot line and all of a sudden they'll go do a side quest for no apparent reason. And you think to yourself, why was this in the series? It's called filler. They're running the pad time. That's what Phil does. He runs the pad time. You know, it's it's like, do we really need this in um, the level one podcast? No. No. He's just running the pad time because you know how you know he's running the pad time? Okay, guys. Well, we've done the shout outs. Um, let's have some Q&A now. Oh, yeah. That is definitely filler right there. Yeah. Hey, here's an idea, Phil. How about calling that's the end of the podcast? And go and play a freaking game. Nah, we can't do that on a on a gaming channel. God forbid. People to actually come to the site now. <clears throat> Immediately, the head editor. What's her What's her name? Um, Jen. Great the reporting there, Phil. Jen Glennon resigned immediately, saying, "Oh, I don't like this management team's new strategy." Okay, now there's basically two different schools of thought on this. Some people are basically saying that this is awful, and here's why. Here's maybe she got a better job somewhere else. You know, I thought of that. You know how some people quit like that? I know she probably didn't like that, but she probably could just coast, you know? But he's or an idiot. We had enough nest egg set aside to. Or yeah, she probably another actually, job. She probably like Jump frustrated. Yeah, she's probably frustrated with these motherfuckers and said, "Well, you know, people don't just quit. <laughs> They've been probably thinking about this for a while." Here's one take. This is from a Nathan Grayson. He says, "Geo Media, that's the name of the company that owns Kotaku, is effectively forcing Kotaku to pivot away from news. Lie, they weren't covering news, and demanding that its staff." of seven writers will now churn out an impossible number of guides per week. That's not what writers signed up for and not why people visit Kotaku in the first place. This is straight up stupid and cruel. Okay. You're stupid and cruel. And here's what one of the employees actually said on Twitter. You know what? Fuck it. Here's a small cup of tea. Management here doesn't even care about the quality of the guides we make. They want us to aggregate them from other sites, like a literal content mill, and went on to basically said, we're just going to use AI to do it. We're not even going to do it ourselves. We're not going to work. We're going to go to AI, and we're going to tell AI, make an aggregate review, and we're just going to put it on the site. So literally, an employee, Kotaku, posted on Twitter saying, I'm just going to plagiarize. And they said this publicly. Where did they say that? Yeah. When did they say that? They said they're going to use AI to help with the with the um, thing. They didn't say, oh, I'm going to plagiarize from other sites. Where did they say that, D-Dog? Nowhere, but um, DSP, how do you think that people get the news? Sometimes they report themselves or they get it from the source, or sometimes they get it from another article and then put their own spin on it, like apparently you're doing right now with your DSP and your news. See, this is why you shouldn't spread bullshit like this because it's like, is that is that what they said? Mm-hmm. But, you know, but what, what was it? What would he know? Because he's plagiarizing right now, isn't he? He's an idiot. I want you to think about this. This is supposed to be a major... I'm sorry, we lost the, uh, the ambient sound and the noise, but that that aggressive noise gate gets to me mm -hmm. yeah like his throat clears is like half a throat clear yeah but that that aggressive uh the aggressiveness of that noise gate is so annoying journalistic website 
that people go to for game news and trust them for true game. What up, Harry Otter? Outright admitting, I'm just going to plagiarize up, my Harry. work from here on out. Are you just making up shit? Are you just making up shit? Like, where does it say? I'm plagiarizing it. Where the fuck did they say they're doing that? So you, you can make it so you can sound good? They publicly said it. <laughs> or where? Just assuming it, that they're they're saying it. If it's publicly said, where is it? Where did they say that? Mm -hmm. Why report news when you can just make the news up? Isn't it more make, exciting? Uh, indeed. <laughs> uh, whatever, old man. Anyway, I get the feeling this is it. I really believe what ha what's happened is here's the deal. At one point, Kotaku was a legit website about games it was i remember years ago there were some good articles over there but every once in a while you get the oddball article that was definitely weird and political and leftist leaning and you're kind of like all right it's one every 20 so all right we'll let it pass or whatever but then all of a sudden the whole gaming journalists seem like they they move hard left yes but not everyone they changed for the worse and became just a 100 percent schlock site and as they became more and more schlocky, people just made them the running joke. Of Phil, did you did you read Kutaku? Did you go there? No. Like I said, why why let um, truth get in the way of a good story? I mean, Jason Schreier is probably the last person that actually gave a fuck. You know, Jen probably tried, but you know, it it seems like a site that's more dictated by the people at the top than the people that are working there. You know. Mm -hmm. Of games journal. Hey, Harry Arda. Oh well, it's Kotaku's take. You know, here we go again, right? Um, I don't know how they thought they were going to survive doing this. I almost feel like they thought they were like the rebels of gaming journalism, but they never bothered to ask if anyone wanted that content. And the answer is no one does. Like literally, even leftist leaning people. Yeah, it's like some guy who streams in a really shitty shirt with um, crappy pictures behind him and a game oversight. Yeah, it's it... nobody asked for this. No one asked for any of this. Read Kotaku articles. You know what I mean? Like, no one's looking for this this baity baity content. That's really what it is. It's always baiting a reaction. Well, yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. Pot meet kettle. Kettle meet a pot. Urban. He is really just stupid. Baiting some kind of a, you know. Isn't that a lot of articles baiting people to click on it? And it's not, you know, you're not going to believe what happens in this game. Um, like Fox News, if you don't watch this report, you might kill your family. Right. Everything's always baity. I mean, DSP definitely clicked base when he said, I got a, I got a new wig or I got a big announcement of something and it falls on deaf ears. Mm -hmm. And then we're over I here. Give you a new, I can even give you a new um, thing. Sony was baity with the new Ghostbusters movie. It made you feel that the, one of the major characters was going to. Oh, oh, the email's in here the in the teaser trailer. The email's here. No, but I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go any further. But all right. But yeah. But in summer. You go watch the movie. It's just like what? Hey, what? And that's all I'm going to say. Exactly. So that they can get some more attention and hopefully bring some more clicks, some more ad revenue to their site. And I don't. Yeah, know Phil. They thought they were going to last doing that. Well, yeah, that's not going to last forever. Now. Being an idiot. What's he doing? Yeah, being stupid. What was, what was he fully? You know, he was it to the point where it's like he's getting to get his really loud. Apparently, he gets louder because he exactly. You know, it's still a do your freaking report, dude. And I just find it hilarious that like the editor like immediately quits when told you got to do gaming content now. It's like that's not what happened. No. Are, are you sure that's the full story? Because you got to get the full story. Like she could have had a hard time at Kotaku for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, the situation happened. You ever, you ever, you probably worked in a place where you're like, man, this is getting a little too much. I'm gonna, I'm out. Yeah, remember I told you the woman at Sega. Remember she went to the toilet and never came back. Yeah, but that was like day one. Like she was at the top. She probably just went. She probably is like, I can't fix this. I'm out. Mm hmm. She you went know, to the toilet, never came back. I mean, she probably was like with her husband and all that stuff. Like, you don't need this shit, honey. Let's go. Let's go to Cancun. Mm hmm. Well, well, 
And it's all journalistic integrity. No, no, no. It's a gaming website. It always was. That was that's the inception of the site so, was that it was going to be a gaming. Hang on, pause. Mm -hmm. So because they're a gaming website, it's not journalism. I have no idea. He's so crazy. Yeah. What was it? But they weren't creating games. They were reporting on it. So they were being <laughs> journalists. Right. Oh, for, for, for Frank I take Phil. I know. DSP doesn't do his due diligence ever. Ever. Dude, I've got I've got 15 monitors right now, and I don't know which one to punch. Uh, how about none of them? <laughs> Just pat the bunny. Okay, I'll pat the bunny. <laughs> Where's Kiki? I need to pat that bunny. <laughs> yeah. Gaming website. So, if you took a job at a gaming website and you refused to actually write articles about the games out there, but instead... But they do write stuff about the games. What up, good lad? How's it going? He's so bad. What's up, good lad? All you did was make political hey, schlock, and no one likes it. How did you think this was going to proceed? Like, did you not understand that there's, like, cause and effect in life? Like, you, you don't make content people want. People move away from your site. It's not making money anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> how did you think you would continue to your employment? You have to make money to get paid. And it's like they don't understand. Yeah, but Kutaku doesn't rattle the can and go, you like Kutaku, right? You like what we do, right? You love what, our, what we do, right? I need you to click on these, these fucking articles or we go away, right? Guys, views are down. I don't see Kutaku going, guys, our site views are down. And how business works. Maybe it's true. Maybe the people who write for Kotaku are these idiotic morons who went to oh my God. stupid universities, you know, where they just get by. Of course. You want to go? You you want to you want to tackle this? Uh, no, because okay, I got this then. Like he, like, the only thing I'm gonna say, he is just assuming that that everyone that works at Kotaku is an idiot, or or that Family Guy thing where you work at the New York Times. They're like, where are the toilets? Oh, no one has an anus here. <laughs> yeah, because they're, they're so perfect right uh where are the toilets oh no one has an anus here at the new york times like does he think it's like it's like that uh, that twitter thing where they have wine on tap and they literally don't do any work it's just it's just uh extremely privileged daycare is is that what it is phil are you are you mad you don't go to extremely privileged gay daycare and make Whatever your job is, where they uh, where they do a little bit of work, they don't show you the work. They show you like, oh, we had a party on top of the roof, and you know, and then we did this stupid thing, and you know, thanks, thanks, guys. I, I, you know, bare minimum, probably got C's and D's in their fucking classes, but still passed, and their rich mommies and daddies paid their way through the college, and now they think just because they have a degree, they're entitled to a job, so they think they're just gonna jump into some fucking. There's a lot, there's a lot to unpack here. Holy shit. So, Phil should know this if you go to community college. If you get a D in your class, you pretty much failed that class. They only yes. accept C's or higher. Oh, really? Yeah, that's how it is in my community college. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm pretty sure it's standard. That makes sense. Uh, like, if you just drop out or just stop showing up to class, they won't give you an F most of the time. The professor will just give you D. That still counts as a fail. So it's a lot higher. Yeah, it's higher than high school. So, so Phil's just talking out of his ass again. But also high school, also high school and those schools are... Uh, those are those are like those are forced. Well, high school you can, well, if you do, that's bad. But you know what I mean. Like they they can set the You're rules. Bad, a, okay. You can you can set the rules a little higher because you have to pay tuition and all that stuff. Community colleges are different because that's like what 
paid by the community mostly. So so what it so how community college gets paid is the more students pass, the more funding they get. Mm. Oh, so they have an incentive to make people get C's. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's funded by a taxpayer dollars. Right. And you also, as the teachers get paid, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I could be talking out of my ass, but um, like the incentive is like, what's the point of having this class of no one's passing it, you know? Right. So crazy. But yeah, I, I, I agree with that. But he's over here literally putting words in their mouths. It's like, you don't know these people. You don't know who Jen is. You don't know these their background. You don't know any of these people. They might have been raised by single parents. You don't fucking know. Like, he projects, like, all these people live, like, these hoity-toity lifestyles. And it's like, not everyone, Phil. Not everyone. Like, you know, they're probably making, like, 50 grand a year. And, you know, it's not it's not high off the hog, homie. And cushy job where they could just fuck around and do whatever they want. But they're not fucking around. They're making articles and shit. Yeah, they're, they're trying to put food on the table, dumbass. They're not taking four years to fucking finish Boulder's Gate. And uh, like a dragon, I know people are like, it's not four years, but it feels that way. Mm. But what was it? You know, apparently, what was it? Their business model's all wrong. You know what they need to do, don't you? Uh, they need to beg their, um, their, their viewers to pay for their stuff. That's oh, you're cool. right. You know, what was it? You know, sh- uh, was it shillings for dweebs? It's it has to be crowdfunded all the way. It's the only way to do it, and not actually do any work. And somehow, magically, for the rest of their life, money is just going to keep falling into their laps. That's not. How- is, is that how you think it's going to happen, Phil? Keep playing games slowly, and money's going to keep falling into your lap. Hang on, let me go outside. I think it might be raining money, so let me let it fall in my lap. Fuck, I wish it was raining money. I could use some of that. It sounds amazing. Mm-hmm. How life works. I had to say it. That seems like modern America seems to think that. That's not how life works, okay? Ooh, modern a lot of times America. in life, you got to bust your ass. You actually have to work hard. Listen, sack of <laughs> sh- <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh, he was serious. Let me laugh some harder. <laughs> well, I was going to say something, but you guys keep laughing. Oh, you were serious? Let me laugh harder. Yeah. Listen, sack of shit. Some of us work very hard for nothing. You got lucky in streaming that you had you literally had 75 people waiting for your late stream. 75 fucking people waiting for your bullshit late stream. You're like, oh, I work your ass. I, I know. I know I keep harping on it. I know I keep pounding the drum. How long is it taking you to beat Boulder Skate and Like a Dragon? Well, technically, he hasn't finished them yet. So you're, you're, you're being premature there. It, it might be still weeks to come. You're literally playing two games. I mean, that's not a problem. I'm not looking at it as the problem, but. You're not getting anything done. Literally getting nothing done. Legit nothing done. (laughs) He's just saying. And he talks about, oh, people have to bust their ass. Yeah, you know what? People that bust their ass, they get like $2 sometimes, Phil. They don't get paid good money. The actual workers get shafted. A lot, you know? People that actually do good work, like TBS and the rest of them, and Atlas, they get rewarded. The people that that actually put in good work, some people don't get rewarded at all. There's a lot of streamers out there busting their ass 12 hours a day trying to make content, and they only make a dollar, if lucky. So you can go fuck yourself in your golden tower that's behind a gate. You actually have to do things you don't like to earn a living. I know because I did it. Phil, Phil, you ever? No, you haven't done that in like 12 years. 
But that's adulting. You're going to do things you don't, you don't like. You're just going to do things. It is what it is. For most of my life until I became a YouTuber, and now I got lucky enough to do what I love for a job. But the rest... You don't love this. You don't love not this. Job. It's not a job. It's a fuck around position that you come here and beg for money. You're basically a goat. No, not a goat. You're basically a bum in a, in a house. That's what he is. He's a bum. You're a bum of everyone else has to bust their fucking asses yeah phil a lot of us have to bust our fuss fucking asses trying trying to make something happen anything god forbid and you're lucky that you get to order doordash and make your wife fat you're lucky that you get to be here throw npcs off the fucking cliff you're lucky that people people show up to your streams because they're dirt fucking bad you're bad you look bad and and your commentary is fucking dog shit and you want to sit here and talk about kutaku yeah kutaku sucks and everyone hates them just like you but that's the thing you think kutaku doesn't or is tone deaf i'm sure they think that they were they were bell of the ball once but you know let's see what happens kutaku just like GameSpot and the rest of print media not printed media but you know like website uh going their viewership went down because you know people moved on to tiktok they moved on to you know youtube they moved on to other things other stuff people consume most of their media through through their iphones through their cell phones through their androids through their tablets people don't sit on computers and fucking go through websites anymore just like how people don't sit here and consume what you do on a daily remember back in the day 12 years ago you supposed to video people consume that shit like it was nothing now they don't consume it at all because you're a dinosaur oh you want to go g or someone i thought you were just gonna say something no, no you, you you pretty much said it i guess these people just grew up you know pampered probably spoiled and oh i'm the lead editor i'm angry now because we have to make game content again well then fuck yourself i don't think that's what happened no <laughs> good good job good luck getting another job hey phil can you have four games done on my desk by next week oh you can't fuck you see i can do it too mm -hmm. phil can you get princess peach showtime done by wednesday you can't why it ain't going to make a hundred dollars. What? Cause no one in any journal in integrity is something in journalism. And if you don't want to be, have any integrity and you're putting out junk after junk after junk, who's going to hire you again? Right. I certainly hope that, uh, you know, maybe you're going to go, go work at a florist or, or, you know, go work at a restaurant. You go work in a florist, but yeah, that's that sandwich shop going there, Phil. Serving tables or something. Serving don't tables. Want you in the journalistic world again after this job, the way that people don't want you now. I mean, Kutaku is a site. It's not a a person. He does know this, right? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think he does, because he's not that intelligent. It, it's a team of people, at, and I don't need to go to Kutaku. Isn't it Domo Kutaku? Yeah, Dama Dama Dama, Mr. Kotaku, Dama Dama. Dama Dama. Hey, and these people, can you imagine making that tweet on Twitter? I'm so upset that they want us to make these guides. I'm literally going to use AI and just admitting publicly you're going to plagiarize your work from now on. Idiot. It's the people who work there. You know what I mean? Like, this guy. <laughs> I know. Wow. But anyway, Kotaku's falling apart at the seams. And the no, it seems quite fine, actually. It's not like they put drama on their site, you know. It's just she resigned and that's it. She just couldn't take it. To say that most of the internet isn't happy about it would be a, a gross misstatement. People are basically going crazy You're about gross. how you know, they're happy. They? This. Now, here's the thing. I'm not happy about people losing their jobs. No one yes, lost are. their job. She resigned. Yeah, he's always happy when, what was it? When Rooster Teeth if, um, thing closed up. Oh, I had survived them. He can't wait and, for it. And he constantly says, the, these game developers should be fired, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 
Yeah, so, sorry. I have a headache. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jen Glennon, who says, some personal news, I resigned from Kutaku, and Jim Spenfeller is a herb? What the fuck does that mean? Oh, um, I was listening to a podcast that went over this. It's a old-fashioned insult. A herb? It's like... I I don't it's it's already don't even ask. the only herb I know is um from WKRP in Cincinnati and he's a bit of a dick is that who they're talking about only herb right. I know is Larry Herb so I firmly believe that the decision to invert Kutaku's edit, editorial strategy to jeopardize or depro uh deprioritize sorry. Deprioritize news in favor of guides and fundamentally misguided given the current infrastructure of the site. This decision is directly contra contradicted by months of traffic data and shows an astonishing disregard for the livelihood of the remaining writers and editors who work there. But yeah, the 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 company is not the company that used to be. Like, duh, you know. Yeah, like, they went from having decent game news, then having politically correct bullshit, then having a PS5 review with, um, fucking, co um, COVID shit in the same review, so it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I wonder why people are not taking you seriously. Right, Their numbers so are showing it. Yeah, they had seven they had seven hundred and seventeen thousand unique visitors. Yeah. Uh Deadspin, uh Kutaku, Gizmodo, they're all suffering. Fourteen staffers got laid off, so yeah, they're 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 suffering. When was this? June fourth, twenty twenty. I wish that oh, old article. Sorry, this is out of date. Sorry about that. There would have been more of a level-headed discussion about this. It sounds like there was just a giant edict, and it was change now. You're or maybe some people wanted to do more. They're like, hey, these articles are diversive. Let's do some game guides and, and stop doing editorials that pisses people off. Because remember, they you, you want to know something that probably driven people away from their site? Didn't they pu publish some about Sweet Baby? And say that gamers are the uh, are the problem or some shit. Yeah, they 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 took three babies, um, side and so forth, and that backfired. Yeah, didn't they say like sweet baby is not is not causing all this bullshit? Yeah, it's not the problem. It's the it's radical people like that guy in Brazil. It was uh, pointing them out, and we should need to attack them. Right, and yeah, I don't know when you make articles like that when instead of going with the flow if i had a website i'm not you know i'm not going to go like oh sweet baby did this i'm like no sweet baby's the fucking <laughs> not the devil but you know they're, they're not their games suck they, at the end of the day they don't make good games whoever yeah. whoever they consult on their games suck it's not like even i said what was it the, you know they're trying to bring it out quickly without actually fact checking Right, it, it's not, it, and I'm talking mechanically stories and everything else. Like people are like, oh, it sucks because of the stories. Like, no, it all of it sucks all around. Every game they touch just suck. We're being forced to tough shit, and if you don't like it, quit. And that's exactly what the lead editor did, right? But he was frustrated. My question is, and you always got to answer ask these questions. How did it get that far, right? How the company changed hands four times. Yeah, yeah. You managed. I forgot about that. Holy shit! Or a lot of times. Remember, yeah, Kutak changed hands multiple times. I I just don't know the exact number. You guys forget that at one time IGN owned Kutaku, mm -hmm. and then it was bought out. Same thing for uh. With uh, Giant Bomb and GameSpot and everyone else, you know, they were under CBS Interactive and then they got bought out by someone else and they got bought out by someone else. Mm -hmm. Like, 
you know, those people sold the company, shaked hands, and then they're like, okay, these new people are like, okay, I think your company should be like this now. Like, uh, what? And then, and then those people get bought out and they're like, okay, I think Kutaku should be like this now. You're like, uh, what? How did it get to that? And Jason Schreier and the rest of those people that used to helm the ship are gone. Kutaku is just a skeleton walking. Point where the site was allowed to go that far off the rails. It was supposed to be games journalism, and instead it became political. Brush your hair, How Phil. did you let the site do that? You got changed hands four who times. Who was running it, and who took this long to tell them that this was the wrong thing to do? Because it wasn't like, oh, there's... They didn't think there was the wrong thing to do. Oh, my God. That's a perfect image right there. Holy shit. <laughs> this is what... This is what... Uh, this is what Cat wakes up to every day. Mm -hmm. That. Thank you very much. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Do I look like Elvis right now? Oh, baby. Oh, boy. I see my temperature rising. Do, 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 do one or two articles it was like every piece of junk they put out was like this for about two years so who made that decision who let them do that that's someone's problem right you're a problem and then to just say well the people who work here right the seven full-time writers i think they have some part-time all right so you know how he looked writers. up to the right corner uh, demon there no 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 the corner demon but that's his that's even going into bullshit mode that's his tell oh, yeah. he's lying now you just have to change everything you do to something you don't want to do. You know, that's that's shitty. I've been there. I've been I was at a job where I was hired to do one thing. And within a year, they decided they didn't want it take you four years to get it done. That to uh, exist anymore. No. So they tr tried to get me to do something else instead. And I didn't want to do it. And I fought against it. And then eventually they got rid of me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They wanted me to do something. I said no. I fought against it. And then they got rid of him. Hey, wait. wait. <laughs> You're employed to do a job. You, that part of the job became obsolete. So they gave you another job to do. But you didn't want to do that job. And you fought against it. And they got rid of you. Yeah. <laughs> And instead of instead of laying you off, they gave you an opportunity to move within the country company. Yeah. Also, a lot of people don't have that opportunity. Also, the other thing is, she was the lead editor of Kutaku. She ran the whole thing. She was the lead of everyone. Mm -hmm. She got tired of every you know her bosses. Like she had to tell the team, "Okay, team, we're doing this today." Mm -hmm. And then what she was hearing is like, this is bullshit. I'm out. Like, you know, like the culture yeah, and the. She left, she, yeah, she left on her own terms. But if it was DSP, he would have just fought it and said, no, I'm not doing it. And then they got rid of him. Right. That's so what she can hang her head high. So how does that could be, be his thing? You got fired, Phil. That's disgraceful. She quit with her dignity. So how is it the same as your story? Right. This happens, well, not, not as, you know, like DSP likes to dance on people's graves, so here we are. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when you're making some of the most toxic content on the internet, you think you just get away with it? It's not even toxic. They just said, tweet, they, they did an article that no one agreed with. Does he have like, does he have like a Rolodex of buzzwords that, that he only knows? Yes. Toxic. Variety. Detractors, meaningful, robust content. Yeah, uh, that's it. I'm gonna try DOS him for variety. Mm hmm. Hey, with it, and again, you're not really working. You're just fucking around. I mean, how long did you think that was gonna last? I, I don't get it. <laughs> I just uh, is he? Am I crazy or does it sound? Is it? Is he trying to blow this thing more than what it is? Oh yeah, he's blowing it all right. Oh yeah, like, like is a blow he, job. That's like, what he's doing. He's blowing it like a blow job. He made it sound like like the, like Kutaku's burning to the fucking ground, and 
and that company's going to sell it off or something and you know they the it's, it's a buy one get one free sale or some shit like the fuck are you going on about mm-hmm. they Mojo, you should trademark that buzzword Bernal. trademark buzz, buzz on the end of it yeah that's my uh that's my new channel now i'm starting buzzword Bernal. coming yeah, soon trademark mm-hmm. but they're a top a top gaming news site no they're not they weren't even making gaming news. They weren't. They weren't making gaming news. They're bigger than you. They were. They they had what was it when they had the resources and the and the actual reporters and all the rest that they were, but they already knew the writing was on the wall. Like I said, one of them's already left. He's working for skill up. Yeah. Because they, they already then, saw the writing was on the wall. And you had that Dr- Jason Schreier guy went to Bloomberg. Yeah. Yeah, he Bloomberg himself out of here. Content. Yeah, but, they were yeah. always politicizing their shit for clickbait. It was stupid as shit. Yeah. Game over, everyone. Game over, man. Game over. We're yeah, and this is game over for me. So on my yeah, game over. Fuck him. Get fucked. We're just gonna end it here. Mojo, Anthony, um, Carl. Yep. Knock. Hey, knock. Sorry you showed up right at the moment at the last thing. Good yep. lad. What was it? I'm I'm gonna scroll up because I wanna I wanna say shout out to people's names that were in the chat. It was it Harry Otto, Drax, Shiloh, Roxy, Boner. Boner. Yeah, and Boner. thanks thanks, Knox, for showing up on hey, my as well. Yeah. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, love you guys. Thanks for watching. I'm like missing somebody. If I did, I'm so sorry. JC, there we go. And Mojo, and Mojo. Yeah, yeah I already said Mojo. Yeah. All right, cool. And and JC, yes. Shout out to PP Burnell. Yep. Yes, the Swedish Chavez.